You're watching Capital One Bowl Media. Bowl season continues on a cold afternoon in Nashville as the 21st ranked Northwestern Wildcats search for their 10th win of the season against the 7-5 Kentucky Wildcats. You're watching the Franklin American Mortgage Music City Bowl as part of Capital One Bowl Mania. He's Andre Ware. I'm Taylor Zarzer on the crew. They call him Heisman. They call me no Heisman. <laughs> You'll see Olivia Harlan in just a minute. Happy holidays to you, my friend. Great to be here in the Music City. How about the Northwestern Wildcats, Dre? They started the season two and three. Yeah. Since then, they've won seven straight games. How have they done it? Yeah, I think it's been the offensive line play. When you look at Blake Hance, their left tackle, he's the guy that really stepped up his play after that Penn State game, and the entire offensive line really opened things up offensively for Northwestern. That offensive line has been terrific, and they are – have all these holes for Justin Jackson, who quite possibly is the most underrated running back in college football. What do you like about it? Yeah, I think the nation's going to get a taste of one of the most underrated players at his position in the entire nation. We know that he can run between the tackles. He can hit plays on the outside. He's got breakaway speed. But he's a team's second leading receiver as well, making plays out of the backfield. And then he protects the quarterback, a three-down player, Taylor, that is pretty much a lost art. Mix that with four straight 1,000-yard seasons, and you've got a special, special player in Justin Jackson. Man, do you. And on the other side for Kentucky, same story. Benny Snell, first team All-SEC for the Kentucky Wildcats. What do you love about the running back they call the Bandit? Well, I love the Bandit after contact. He's a guy that engages, a patient runner, a cutback runner, a guy that has accounted for 42% of the 1,300 yards he has after contact. He just runs through you and runs over you, will look you up, and is not shy about contact. Big Blue Nation looking for its first eight-win season in nine years. Northwestern's looking for eight wins in a row. Olivia Harlan has more on their terrific running back, Justin Jackson, when we return to the Music City Bowl in Nashville. It's one of the most beautiful cities in America, Nashville, Tennessee. Proud to be at Nissan Stadium to bring you the 20th edition of the Franklin American Mortgage Music City Bowl. Justin Jackson needs 19 yards to join the top 10 in college football rushing history. For more on the best running back ever at Northwestern, here's Olivia Harlan. Well, Taylor, his head coach doesn't think he gets enough national attention, and it's hard not to agree with him. Four 1,000-yard seasons. Pat Fitzgerald says he's just a dream to coach, a once-in-a-lifetime type player. And get this, for all four years, he's sat in every special teams meeting, and he's never played special teams. Coach asked him why, and he said because he knows he'll have to do that on Sundays. Now, all that Nor Northwestern running backs all follow suit. Andre, you said that that tells you all you need to know about the kind of player he is. Big impact on this team. And, guys, he averages 21 carries a game and is on no touch count for his finale today. Yeah, it tells me about what type of person he is as well. And he's a leader, an unselfish player that sets an example for his position group. When you do that, you, uh, you're about business. And Justin Jackson's about that thinking about uh, what he's going to be doing on the next level. Boy, that, uh, that, that tells me a lot. We'll have to wait a few minutes to watch him as the Northwestern did win the toss but will defer. So Kentucky will receive the opening kick. It's 41 degrees here in Nashville for the second ever meeting between these two schools. Northwestern won the first one back in 1928, 89 years between meetings. Good to have the Battle of the Wildcats Northwestern and Kentucky. There's that newspaper article from <laughs> October 19th, 1928, a 7-0 win for the Northwestern Wildcats in Evanston. As you see, they used the forward pass, as they called it back then, for the touchdown, 7-0, 89 years ago. Man, what a beautiful day. I think we're going to have more than today. seven you points think so? scored in this one today. <laughs> no doubt about it. But these teams are equally matched. This is one bowl game I was eager to get to and to see this bowl season because both teams are so similar in their approach to things. Yes, they are, as Luke Otto 
the kickoff specialist for Northwestern. Will kick it deep to Lynn Bowden, one of the most dangerous kick returners in college football. Bowden had a 93-yard return earlier this season, but instead it's taken by an up back past the 30-yard line up to the 33, as that is Zach Johnson, who doesn't get much action, but gives Kentucky solid starting field position. Steven Johnson makes his last start of his career with the Kentucky Wildcats, 14 and nine when he plays the position of quarterback. Andre, he is the leader of their football yeah, team. Yeah, unquestioned leader. You know, he's a guy that has earned the respect of his teammates, the coaches, everyone in the building. The way he takes care of this, they all believe they can win with Steven Johnson under center. One of 22 seniors playing for the Cats for the final time today. And Benny Snell in the backfield fakes it to him on an RPO to start the game. And up top to Taven Richardson, who makes the catch in bounds for the big gain into Northwestern territory down to the 41. That's 26 yards. Boy, and this is excellent coverage. It's just a better throw and a catch. And a guy that's got tremendous athletic ability. Had a chance to visit with Taven Richardson before the game. And has told him the physical skills are there. Put the time in in the offseason. Another fake to Snell. And Johnson rolls out, takes on defenders, and gets maybe a yard. Brett Walsh there as you see Jordan Thompson as well second down showing you some toughness early in the game is Steven Johnson you what the, you can't question his leadership skills guys just tend to feed off Steven Johnson his body language everything is there it spells winner that 14 and 9 record in Kentucky and two seasons of seven wins nice wants to throw again Escapes some pressure, throws against his body, and has Richardson inside the five. The most consistent receiver of the group this year has been Taven Richardson, and you see why, but this is a throw that not a lot of guys can make. Rolling left, back across your body in the middle of the field. Every coach in America will tell you not to make that throw, but. How about the athletic ability of Steven Johnson and just the want to of Taven Richardson to come back and make a play for his quarterback. 36 yards setting Kentucky up at the doorstep to the four. Here's Benny Snell and he down to the three. It'll be second and goal from there as Joe Gaziano makes the tackle. How many times this week do we hear Benny Snell, Justin Jackson, it's going to be a run. You know, this game is all about the running backs. And then you come out slinging it. Taven Richardson showing you playmaking ability and certainly Steven Johnson in the passing game along with that. But we heard nothing else but all about the running backs. Well, Benny Snell has 31 rushing touchdowns, a record at Kentucky in only two seasons. And here he goes for number 32. The Kentucky Wildcats strike first. Well, you get down close to the goal line and you go to the guy, the shoulders that you rode all game long. A couple of nice blocks. It's blocked by Greg Hart, the tight end, to, on a kickout block to open it up for Benny Snell and Kentucky on the board first here in the Music City Bowl. The bandit fired up on the sidelines is Austin McGinnis, the all-time leading scorer in Kentucky history. Snell's contagious, isn't he? He is. Great attitude. It fires up his teammates, and McGinnis makes the extra point. Kentucky comes in as a nine-and-a-half-point underdog, and on the first series plays with a chip on their shoulder, culminating with Benny Snell in the end zone. 7 nothing Kentucky in Nashville. From Music Row on Broadway, over the river, and inside Nissan Stadium where Kentucky wastes no time getting on the board. Mark Stoops, 26 and 35 in his fifth season at Kentucky, but he's improved his team's record, either having the same record or a better record each of the five years that he's been the head coach at Kentucky. Only one of two programs in the country that has done that. New Mexico State is also playing in a bowl game this afternoon is the other. Second and third place finishes in the SEC East the last two years. That's the best since divisional play 
in 1992 and back-to-back seven win seasons for this program for the first time in seven years. And he's a long way from satisfied. And we had a chance to talk to him this week and he is constantly or continuously building the Kentucky brand and in terms of football, they've had a, a solid early signing class that he's pretty fired up about. And uh, you know, he said he got tired of poaching, he got other teams poaching his players late in the process going into February. So he is a big advocate for the early signing period. McGinnis kicks it deep, and Jay, Jeremy Larkin puts a knee on it, and Clayton Thorson and the Northwestern Wildcats will start at their own 25-yard line. 6'4", 225-pound redshirt junior who thought about going pro but will be back next season for his senior year. Where does he need to improve, Andre? Yeah, I think it's the footwork. You talk to the coaches, you watch the film, it's just footwork, quickening things up. But uh, I'll tell you what, the placement of the football is next level stuff because he will throw receivers open. If you're on the inside, he's going to place the football outside. If the defender's on the outside, he's going to place it inside. We'll see that all game long. You saw those 26 wins. Justin Jackson with a Houdini-like effort just to lose a yard in the backfield as Kentucky was all over him. Jordan Jones and company. Mike Edwards there as well as you see a flag come in. I think just from an athlete standpoint, Mr. Coit. Mr. Chris Coit here. After the play, personal foul, offense number 59. Half the distance to the goal, the down counts, second down. J.B. Butler, the former walk-on, who is, he just doesn't do a whole, whole lot of things, or just one thing well, but he does a lot of things pretty good. You'll see number 59 right there late, working against Josh Pascal. Starting at defensive end today for Denzel Ware. Second and 23, Northwestern at their own 12-yard line. The underneath pass goes past the 20 up to the 21 for nine yards to Bennett Skoranek. And they won't panic. It's not a team that's going to make a lot of mistakes. Kind of surprised with a penalty early, but a big third down situation here. And... Kentucky can get off the field and still have some pretty decent field position. Need to get to the 35, third and 14. Thorson has time, escapes the pocket, throws underneath, complete short of the first down to Jackson. It'll be fourth and three. Yeah, 62 percent is Pat Fitzgerald on the season when going for it on fourth down and talking to him before the game. He said when they cross the 50, it is a dealer's choice. But this is clearly a situation where he has to punt the football back to Kentucky. Hunter Nicewander will come in to punt just under a 43 yard average. And you see Kentucky has been terrific with Charles Walker returning punts all season. off the side of Nice Wonder's foot but takes a Northwestern bounce out of bounds, 47 yards. Capital One Bowl Mania rolls on with a couple more games tomorrow. At noon Eastern on ESPN, Louisville takes on Mississippi State in the Tax Slayer Bowl and on ABC at 12.30 Eastern, 9.30 a.m. Pacific, Iowa State takes on Memphis in the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. Both of these games are also available on the ESPN app. Boy, that last drive of Kentucky, certainly impressive. We thought they were going to come out running with Benny Snell. It was Taven Richardson over the top of the big catch in the first play of the game, then one later in the drive, and then the, the workhorse back and Benny Snell capping things off. A nice series for Kentucky to start the game. And Snell again takes the carry and doesn't get anything. Might have lost half a yard. It'll be second down. Northwestern rotates nine defensive linemen and their linebacker in the middle, Patty Fisher, is a redshirt freshman and leads the country in all freshmen in terms of tackles this season. Yeah, second team, all Big Ten. And I'll tell you what, he played at a great high school program in Katy, Texas, at Katy High School. All they do is win championships and go to state just about every year. 
Empty backfield for Johnson. Sideline pass too far in front of K1 Ross. Third down. There, going to throw it where his receiver, Ross, will have an opportunity to catch it or it's going out of bounds. Stay away from the mistakes early in the ball game. Decent field position in which to work with. Come back here and fight on third down. See Kentucky's improvement on third down this season now north of 40%. Johnson, sideline, lob pass to Ross, who makes the catch, but they call it incomplete. He just couldn't finish it to the ground or through the ground, and you see him here get his hands on it, working against uh, Montre Hardage on, at corner. A little underthrown. If he just finishes it right there, it's actually a catch. Body part, his left knee or right knee is inbounds. Just got to finish that baby. Matt Panton, the transfer from Columbia, the Australian rules punter, averaging over 42 yards per punt. You see him run up with that Australian tight punt, and it bounces near the 35-yard line and will go out of bounds. It is a 46-yard punt. Northwestern trying to get to work, down seven. The Franklin American Mortgage Music City Bowl. Brought to you by Franklin American Mortgage. It all begins with home. Visit musiccity.com and Chevy. Chevy has earned J.D. Power Dependability Awards for cars, trucks, and SUVs. The Franklin American Mortgage Fan Zone started yesterday, still going on until 9.30 tonight on Broadway. Oh, see, that's how you do it right there. That? Well done, my friend. <laughs> Kentucky awesome. strikes first 7 nothing here at the Music City Bowl in Nashville at Nissan Stadium. Number 21 Northwestern looking for their eighth consecutive victory and a 10-win season for the only the fifth time in program history. And this is Justin Jackson following blockers, and he gets past the 35-yard line for three. Denzel Ware sitting this game out. Josh Pascal, it was just a third down pass rusher for most of the year for Kentucky. Number four right there. He's going to have to play a bigger role as an every down player. He's a true freshman that is talented, but this is the most extensive action he's had. Thorson throws the deep ball one on one down there looking for Skoranek, but right in coverage is Derek Beatty. And I love the fact that the officials let him play. I saw a couple of guys bumping. Receiver bumping the defensive back. Defensive back's fighting. And Beatty's fighting for position. It makes a nice play at the end of it to bring up third and long. Again, another situation where Northwestern is not quite comfortable, Taylor. 0 for 1 today. Have to get to the 42. Thorson under pressure and down he goes. The man that Andre just talked about. Joshua Pascal making the start for Denzel Ware with the sack. He is a, as I mentioned, third down specialist. And he gets home. Watch him get up the field and then back underneath inside. Right here, the nice little under move. Keeps his footing and makes it right to the doorstep of Clayton Thorson. Uh, Josh Pascal, he is going to be some player. Everybody in the building respects the kid and uh, just his work ethic. Three and a half sacks this year. Nice wander with his second punt. This one a good one. Walker punt. calls for a fair catch. 49 yards in the air. The ESPN app is a fan's best friend. Stream every ESPN and ABC college football game live at home or on the go. You'll get access to scores, news, and highlights all season long. Download the ESPN app to start streaming now. We've been using that thing. Every single day, it seems, the last few months as the V crew has traveled all over this great nation. Games going on all over the place today. That Wake Forest, Texas A&M game that's continues a, to go back and forth. That's a lifesaver for a sports fan, no <laughs> really? doubt about it. Saheem King in the backfield standing next to Steven Johnson. 
instead goes to the true freshman Lynn Bowden, and Bowden has no place to go. He'll lose a few. Yeah, you got to get right up the field. The, uh, the convoy's coming from inside out, and you don't want to continue inside. You want to plant that right foot, get right up the field, and just take what's there. That's That happens to a lot of young players because in high school, you're the best player on the field. I can outrun everybody. Patty Fisher is all over the place. He's a machine right there in the middle. Auction pitch to the man they call Sci-Fi and King. He gets a few and 42. Fisher again with the tackle. This guy loves Luke Keekley. Many think he's the best middle linebacker in pro football. He sure plays like him. Well, he plays a lot like his head coach in Pat Fitzgerald as well. Sideline to sideline. He doesn't get tired. A guy that, uh, as I mentioned, came from a great high school program. So he came in. They, they were able to redshirt him. But uh, he came in ready to play. Fisher with both tackles, third and seven for Steven Johnson. And the throw to Richardson, but he can't bring the ball to the jersey incomplete. That's one Richardson when he's watching this film. He'll look back. The big third down situation is going to wish he reeled this one in. Nice job by Steven Johnson and stepping up into the protection and delivering. It was there for the taking, no doubt about it. Just got to finish. On two occasions on third down, Ross, K1 Ross lets one miss, actually misses an opportunity, and certainly there, Taven Richardson, another. Matt Panton with his second punt. As Flynn Nagel stands back and waits for it, calls for a fair catch at the 30-yard line. That's 42 yards. Pat Fitzgerald is Northwestern football. This is his 12th season. He's won 86 games. You see his career record as a coach and what he did as a player. Northwestern has four 10-win seasons. He has two of them as a head coach, one as a player. This man made it very clear to us yesterday, Andre, in our meetings. Yeah. I'm not going anywhere. This is my program. This is where I'll be coaching forever. Well, they have got a, an athletic building that's going up that is second to none at Northwestern where he got a chance to really design it himself. Thorson with the option to Jackson. A missed tackle by Kentucky, and look at Jackson go into Wildcat territory. That is Jeremy Larkin who got the carry there instead of Jackson on the, the option toss. And in the backfield, you see the missed tackle for Kentucky. Yeah, on a rare occasion in which they rest Jackson, it's Larkin who actually has, the, he leads the team in yards per carry with 5.2. Thorson empty backfield, flushed out underneath the Skoranek. And Skaronik's near another first down. And this is where Northwestern offensively, they become dangerous. They get in a rhythm, and then all of a sudden they start to push the gas a little bit, like a lot of no-huddle teams do, but they have got a solid guy at quarterback in Thorson who can spread the ball around to many, many receivers. Josh Allen laying there on the field. Going back to Jeremy Larkin for just a moment, the primary backup to Justin Jackson. A lot of Northwestern fans are, are wondering, Andre, who mm -hmm. will be the heir apparent to Jackson? Larkin will have a chance next season. Well, they're built similarly in stature. And I'll tell you what, he's got some speed. Mention the fact that he actually leads the team with, uh, with 5.2 yards per carry on the average. And he's run for 391 yards on the year. And about five touchdowns to go along with it. I'll say he will have an opportunity uh, during the spring to solidify himself as uh, as the next guy. Redshirt freshman, so he'll be back next year as a sophomore, as you see Allen off the field. So the men they called the Blitz Bros, Denzel Ware, suspended due to a team violation, and now Josh Allen, both off the field for Kentucky. This is second and four for Northwestern. And this is Larkin, who's about a yard shy of the first down where T.J. Carter makes the tackle. Can't wait for Monday. Oklahoma and Georgia followed by Clemson and Alabama in the semifinal games. 
Mr. Ware already on record. Yep. Clemson and Georgia, no right? Doubt, no doubt about it. So now third and one. It's Larkin again. And he's going to be short. And Pat Fitzgerald will spin the dial here and go for it on fourth down. There's no hesitation whatsoever. And they're going to check in Justin Jackson on this fourth down situation. But I think man to man, man per man, this is the most athletic a team that Northwestern may have faced all year long. Northwestern 21 of 34 on fourth down. Kentucky's had a trouble getting off the field on this down. Don't mess and around. And they can't do it here either as Thorson gets the first down. Kentucky has given up a first down 18 of 25 times on fourth down this season. Yes, about 71% in that, in that situation. But don't mess around with taking it back and, you know, an exchange to allow for penetration. Let Clayton Thorson, who is 6'4", 225, get behind big Brad North and pick up the first down. Fresh set of downs as Jackson goes out as a wideout at the top of your screen. Dorsey flushed out, incomplete, looking for Jackson down at the 17-yard line. Let's go down to Olivia. Taylor, Josh Allen back on the field. He tweaked his calf. Trainer stretched it, stretched it out, so he's back. It's they really they need about. him. Sixth in the SEC in sacks this year. Second team all SEC. A guy that can play sideline to sideline. He can drop in coverage, rush the passer, as I just talked about. He is uh, one, part of the heart and soul of this defense. Second and ten. This is a jet sweep to Jelani Roberts, who has the first down inside the 20. And if he doesn't get tracked down by Jordan Jones, he may be in the end zone and dancing, celebrating with his team. I mean, right here, nice job of securing the corner. We got a nice block by Cameron Green. Their super back is what they call it. It's more of a hybrid tight end, the move tight end, so to speak. He's able to turn the corner for a big game. He got 12, and he puts Northwestern in the red zone where they're 91% in scoring this season. Thorson to the end zone, incomplete. He was looking for Jackson, but he was double covered. I'm surprised. Darius West is in center field and has got a play on the football. Watch number 25. Come into your screen, make a play. He's watching the receiver. Get your eyes on the ball and make a play. You dive, you, you somehow make that play. West has had two significant injuries in his time with Kentucky, has made it through his junior season. This is Larkin, and he'll get just past the 16-yard line. Mike Edwards makes the tackle. It's third and eight. Well, he is as good as they get. Mike Edwards will drop down. He can play nickel. He's, he plays safety. He's about as good as it gets in the SEC at that position. 90 tackles on the year, and he's played banged up late in the season, but still out there and still contributing. Second mo or tied for the lead in interceptions out there with four on the year. Northwestern needs to get to the eight. Incomplete. Looking for Macon Wilson, who is tied up there with Chris Westry. Fourth down. A nice job of bringing some pressure to speed up the process. Watch the pressure off the edges. They bring it late and time it just right. Both guys fighting. I like the officials just allowing them to play today. This is Charlie Kubander, who's had a terrific freshman season, 12 of 14 on the year. And this will be from 33 yards. And he puts Northwestern on the board. So Jeremy Larkin with a big run to get Northwestern into position. 7-3, Kentucky. Franklin American Mortgage Music City Bowl in Kentucky leads Northwestern 7-3.
With just a few minutes remaining in the first quarter, with Andre Ware, I'm Taylor Zarzer. Olivia Harlan is on the field. Kentucky came out swinging with a couple of great passes down the field, culminating with a Benny Snell touchdown. Yeah, we were expecting a fastball, and we're throwing a couple of curveballs by Kentucky, expecting a lot of Benny Snell. Well, they went to the air to Taven Richardson early and often down the sideline, across his body, a big play down the middle of the field, and then we got the fastball we were looking for in Benny Snell capping off a nice drive to start this game for the Kentucky Wildcats. Not sure we're going to get to 55-52 to 52 when this one is uh, over with today. What a wild game in Charlotte. Congratulations to Dave Clawson and the Wake Forest Demon Deacons on that victory over Texas A&M today. You see Mark Stoops, the head coach of the Kentucky Wildcats in his fifth season, now the dean of SEC East coaches. The we, longest tendered one in that division. We are, though, past the point output the last time these two teams played, faced one another on the field. A 7 nothing win by Northwestern way back when. 1928 to be exact. Northwestern just kicked a 33-yard field goal by Charlie Kubander. And now Otto will kick it deep to Lynn Bowden. All SEC freshmen who here in Nashville against Vanderbilt had a 93-yard kick return in Kentucky's last win. He'll field this one from the 10. And he's past the 30 to the 35-yard line where Steven Johnson and the Cats will come back on offense. You were saying, Andre, earlier today, uh, you were surprised at some of the inefficiency that Johnson and his receivers had this year. He lost Dorian Baker, one of yeah. their best wide receivers, but he came out slinging today with those throws to Richardson. He really had to just kind of develop chemistry with Taven Richardson and Kaywan Ross and, and Blake Bone, who was actually out of this one, and it was, you know, new, new receivers for for Stephen Johnson. So it took a little while for for uh, the two to get on the same page. Benny Snell's had a phenomenal sophomore season and on cue, dives over a man into Northwestern territory. How about the high jumping ability there? <laughs> we were talking about you can feel Benny Snell play football. And, I mean, every, he has you on the edge of your seat each and every time he touches the ball. What a run here. A nice little hurdle right there. Ah, give it, take it away, and continue on. Yards after contact. We mentioned it at the top. 42% of the yards he's rushed for this year have come after contact. He got 18 on the last play. He gets some contact and still gets a yard or two here. He's the first ever Kentucky running back with back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons. Next year, he'll be on pace to become the leading rusher in school history in only three seasons. Already has the rushing touchdown record. Had one in this game. He has 32. And Justin Jackson has put together four. Benny Snell certainly on pace to do that, provided he, he stays and sticks around for a senior season. Second and nine. Fake to Snell. The throw goes to Josh Ali, who only has two catches on the season. It'll be third down. Yeah, I talked to Eddie Grand down on the field before the game, and he told me this is a young man, along with, with Isaiah Epps, who had an outstanding bowl practice run Ball had both had both, both excellent bowl practices, and they're really waiting on him to take the next step. He's a talented youngster. He's going to have to contribute in a big way next year. Neither team has converted to third down yet. Combined 0 for 6. Johnson in the traffic. Dangerous pass looking for Bowden. It's fourth down. Yeah, excellent coverage by the safety. Kyle Cairo. Yeah, Kyle Cairo is in great position to make this play. You'll see him allow Bowden to release off the line of scrimmage, and then there, plants right with him. Pretty much runs the route with Lynn Bowden. Now what to do here for Kentucky? Just inside Northwestern's 42-yard line. At least initially, Snell and Johnson stay on the field. And those late youngsters out there, and then Bowden's trying to get in position as well. They may take a time out here. They do decide to take it, but now a flag comes in. 
be an illegal motion, but I'm not sure Epps got set and a Bowden started. False start. Yeah. Offense. All 11 players did not set prior to the snap. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. Uh, Epps had to get himself to the other side of the formation, and then Bowden comes in motion. Never got set. If both had stopped, then you can go ahead and continue the play, but you'll see Epps get himself set, and then Bowden comes in motion. The ball's going to be snapped as he's as he's trying to get get himself outside. And that's one where if you're a senior quarterback at Steven Johnson, you just tell him, hey, stop. you got to know that. Stop. We'll snap the football, and then we're all good. Panton with his third punt trying to pin Northwestern deep, and it goes over Charles Mouche's head. Northwestern will have it at their own 20-yard line. Let's go down to Olivia. Yeah, guys, this is kind of a revenge game of sorts for quarterback Clayton Thorson. The last time he played an SEC opponent, it was a big loss to Tennessee in the Outback Bowl. Still their largest margin of victory, 45-6. to six. So when he found out the opponent in this one, he was pretty excited. He said, I got to admit, that's one thing I was looking forward to in this game. He was a freshman starter back in the end of the 2015 season. He was intercepted twice, sacked four times. And now he comes into this one as Northwestern's all-time winningest quarterback. With 26 career wins, and he hands off to the best back in Northwestern history, Justin Jackson, who has a chance to get into the top 10 all-time in college football rushing today. Yeah, really got a lot of respect for this young man. Three down back, and you know what? You got to be durable to do and accomplish what he's done, rushing for 1,000 yards, four consecutive years. It's amazing. It's 14 more. This time, Thorson loads up to Skoranek, and Bennett makes the catch, but a flag comes in, and Northwestern thinks it's on Kentucky. Uh, and it is. It's just a, a little bit extra by Derek Beatty, the corner, where you don't have to flip a guy like that. That is what they're trying to get out of football. In wrestling, it's a belly-to-belly -belly suplex. <laughs> After the play, personal foul, defense number eight. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. And it doesn't, it doesn't play in college football. Nice throw here by Thorson, the completion, and you, that right there, every time is going to draw a penalty, especially if it's even close to the whistle. So with the catch and the personal foul, that's a 24-yard play for Northwestern that gets them right near midfield. Here's Jackson. Looking for space, and he is near the 45-yard line. Nice move, good patience, and you see why this young man is, has gone about the way he's done it. Only one of nine players to rush for 1,000 yards in four consecutive years. And he slips and falls just past the 43-yard line on a second and three. And what's the last play of the first quarter in the Franklin American Mortgage Music City Bowl? Battle of the Wildcats today. Kentucky leads Northwestern 7-3. We're back to Nashville in just a moment. This man, Justin Jackson, needs five yards to become the 10th leading rusher in college football history. He's already passed a bunch of famous running backs that we'll show you in just a moment. First things first, he needs to get his team a first down on a third and less than a yard. Here's the pitch to him. And he's 10th in college football history inside the 30-yard line. 14 yards there for Justin Jackson. Already had passed the likes of Marshall Falk, Marcus Allen from USC on that list. The great George Rogers, part of Andre Ware's Heisman fraternity. Two-time winner, Archie Griffin and Herschel Walker. Four of those five guys won the Heisman Trophy. Justin Jackson doesn't get a lot of attention outside the Big Ten. Here's Larkin throwing back to Thorson, and Clayton makes the catch inside the 10-yard line. 
but he's gripping his right knee in some pain there on what will be a first and goal. Oh, boy. <clears throat> Matt Alvidi is the backup who's played some this year, but Jordan Jones reads this out. It's a little late, but he's able to recover and get back to the quarterback, Clayton Thorson. I mean, you could just kind of see that that left knee, a right knee actually buckle as Jordan Jones makes contact right there. Not a pretty sight. It's a huge groan here in the crowd no when they doubt. showed it on the, on the board here and Thorson in agonizing pain on what was a 24 yard catch by the quarterback. We'll check on him in just a moment. Clayton Thorson on a halfback pass. The quarterback catches a 24-yard pass from Jeremy Larkin to put Northwestern inside the 10-yard line, but his right knee buckled, and he's in agonizing pain at the moment inside the 10-yard line. You see all his teammates watching the winningest quarterback in program history. Matt Alvidi, the mustachioed Alvidi, the backup who's played in four games this season, did come in in relief against Minnesota on November 18th, did not attempt to pass. Last pass attempt was October the 7th against Penn State. And he actually played against Duke in the second week of the season, and that's where he threw his first career touchdown pass, his only touchdown, the only touchdown pass of his career. But, well, that is a sight that we don't like seeing right there. And that is a guy, a young man that uh, was actually thinking about making a decision after the season, maybe going to the next level. Great to see Jordan Jones and Kentucky's players come over and hug yeah. Thorson there. You saw Justin Jackson do it too. Here's Chris Westry coming over to lend some support as well. It's just a an ordinary tackle by Jordan Jones and Cleet looked like it got stuck. And uh, uh, you wind up with uh, with a bad bad injury. See Coach Fitzgerald there. Making sure that they take care of Clayton as they cart him off of the field. And his redshirt junior season comes to an end. One of the most painful parts of football is watching a scene like this, especially in a bowl game, when it happens to a man that is so important to his program. Tonight, the New Year's Six starts. We'll have the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic from AT&T Stadium in Arlington. Sam Darnold in number eight USC squaring off against JT Barrett in his final game in the number five Ohio State Buckeyes. 8.30 p.m. Eastern, 5.30 Pacific on ESPN and the ESPN app. JT Barrett, so polarizing, the ups and downs of his career was not on the field due to an injury three years ago when they won the national championship, but a huge part of that team. And everybody's talking about Sam Darnold. Will this be his final game at SC? You think he should come back to college? Uh, that is a tough, every circumstance is a little bit different, but it is tough to pass up where they're talking about where he may, maybe the number one overall pick in the draft. And so uh, I don't know that it gets any better than that for Sam Darnold, but that's, that's gonna be a matchup of quarterbacks there with JT Barrett against Sam Darnold. Bob Shoes and Brock Heward, Allison Williams, they have a great one coming up in Arlington after this. So first and goal for Alvidi from the five with Justin Jackson standing next to him. And here's Jackson straight ahead to the goal line, powers in, touchdown Northwestern. Well, you just don't think that he can run between the tackles at 5'11", 200 pounds, but defenders rarely get a straight shot on Justin Jackson and you'll see here this is just second effort he's engaged by Courtney Love right about the line of scrimmage and he actually goes forward and you see there the approval of Pat Fitzgerald <laughs> does this man love football or not? Oh, and there's no doubt about it all you got to do is sit in a room with him for about a minute so much emotion from Fitz in his 12th season as the head coach of the Wildcats, searching for their eighth straight win. Kubander's extra point is good, and Northwestern has its first lead. They have been outstanding in the second quarter 
this season. More on that in just a moment, but let's get an update on Clayton Thorson down to Olivia. Yeah, Taylor, it is his right knee that was injured. He can move the leg, and an athletic trainer told me they couldn't really evaluate on the field to know the severity, so obviously going in the locker room. But, the, but Northwestern also lost another offensive player on that drive, wide receiver Bennett Skoranek. He's in the locker room getting evaluated after that big hit. His return is questionable. Yeah, it was a hit by Beatty being slammed to the turf, which drew the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. That's when Skoranek left the field, and you could see him. He had some cobwebs, and they were trying to, trying to get him right. Northwestern's been outstanding in quarters two and four this year. They didn't score a point in their last three games in the first quarter until they had a field goal today. But look at those numbers, 40 points in the first quarter to 136 in the second. And they add to it today with that touchdown score just a moment ago. Yeah, they've been magnificent. And what it tells me is they figure you, you out after the first quarter, and then it's just coaching. We're going to change up some things. They're doing this. We're going to go to this. And, and Northwestern has been just about automatic in the second and fourth quarters of games. Bowden fields this one inside the five. The man can fly, and he's up near the 40-yard line. True freshman that does everything. Wide receiver, running game, throwing passes, and he's first team all SEC in the kick return game. Yeah, he got a couple of nice blocks up front. And I think Josh Pascal was on, on that kickoff return team out throwing a block in front of Lynn Bowden. A couple of true freshmen doing some nice work. From Youngstown, Ohio, that is Mark Stoops country. Stoops has a lot of his relatives here in the stadium today. Steven Johnson underneath and throws behind his intended tight end, Justin Rigg. Yeah, I, I feel you, Steven Johnson. You never, as a quarterback, want to see a guy throw his hands up after you throw a pass. You have no idea what I'm dealing with back here in this pocket. So don't give me the hands like I don't know when you when, when the ball's a little off the offline. He's had some communication issues with his tight end since C.J. Conrad went down in the Georgia game, lost for the season with a foot injury. He pumps and throws down the field for a first down to Charles Walker. Nice job there, getting the corner to bite. And Walker just continues, slips right behind the corner between the safety right there. You get the corner to bite, safety can't get over there in time. Equay trying to get off the hash to get over to make a play, and he's unable to do so. It's a 23-yard catch for Walker, who made 14 of his 24 career catches this season. Johnson from a muddy pocket, deep ball, one-on-one -on -one to Richardson, and the flag comes in. What an effort by Taven Richardson. And he's working against Montre Hardage. The there corner. Are fouls by both teams. They will offset pass interference. Defense number 24. Holding offense number 73. Replay first down. Yeah, Kyle Meadows, the left tackle, but Hardage is riding the jersey all the way down the field. You see the hold right there, right there in the at the center of your screen by Meadows. Patty Fisher there at the end of the play get to Johnson. That was not called, and we, of course, had pass interference at the end of the play. So offsetting penalties. Let's go back. And we'll and check out the Hardy foul. Yeah, watch him just grab the jersey right there. I don't know what yard line that is. Probably about seven yards, the right hand on the shoulder pads, and then you never look. Boy, that is uh, <laughs> the definition. They ought to put a photo or video up of what not to do. He's actually shaking up himself. Junior out of Georgia had five interceptions last year, is seven in his career. He has a good cover corner that's not afraid to certainly mix it up. 53 tackles as a corner this year. That is, that you'll put your helmet in there and, and mix it up if, if you're, you're coming away with 53 tackles. A lot of guys aren't willing to do it. So after all of that, Kentucky 
will do it all over again from the from the 37 yard line. Benny Snell, no place to go. Will lose more than a handful. Marcus McShepard comes in there, as does Joe Gaziano. And here comes a flag at the end of the play. Maybe a little bit extra on the tail end of this. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, offense number 26, contact with an official. Number 26 is disqualified for the remainder of the game. Second down. Oh, wow. That changes everything. Benny Snell ejected from the football game for making contact with an official after the big loss on the play. See him straddling the sideline, gets up and says, T get your hands off of me, basically, to Chris Coit, the oh, referee. come on. Come on. I mean... You got a guy that's being overrun by five players. It's like Chris Coit wanted to help him up and Benny Snell didn't want the help. help. And then he throws the flag and kicks the kid out of the game. Are you kidding me? Now second and 32 for Kentucky. Johnson to the sideline. Gaziano got a hand on it. It's third in a mile, taking Benny Snell out of the football game. That, that changes is, everything that for is, Kentucky. That is ridiculous, in my opinion. Absolutely ridiculous. You're absolutely going over. You put your hands out, and he snatches away, and you caught, throw the penalty and then eject him. Unbelievable, in my opinion. Well, you could tell he was trying to hesitate there without really pushing Coit. And, and there was no push. He just pulled his hands back. Jordan Jones comes over to talk to Snell. A painful way for his sophomore season to end. Johnson underneath to Snell's backup, Saheem King. It'll be fourth in a mile. Kentucky's forced to punt. That, that's when you should not be a part of the football game. Chris Coit, the official. I mean... You just don't want that to happen where you, that is arguably the best player on offense for the Kentucky Wildcats that they've lost because you were help, looking to help him up and he didn't want the help. At that point, you don't know if it's a Northwestern player or an official. You just don't want the help. It's like, get away from me. And then you kick the kid out of the game. Ridiculous in my opinion. Nagel calls for a fair catch on Tanton's punt. And with 12 minutes to go in the second quarter, Northwestern has the 10-7 lead. You could argue Benny Snell is as valuable to his team as anyone in college football. Out for the remainder of the game. The Franklin American Mortgage Music City Bowl. Brought to you by Franklin American Mortgage. It all begins with Poe and Gaylord Opryland Resort. Everything in one place so you can have it all. Kentucky, you see the team activities they took in during their time in Nashville, had some karaoke, and Cash Daniel, linebacker for the Cats, comes in wearing the Stone Cold Steve Austin shirt, <laughs> gets the Kentucky teammates fired up, screaming SEC chant to the rest of his teammates. Maybe that's where Derek Beatty picked up that belly-to-belly -belly suplex. <laughs> <laughs> that's some wrestling going on. And everything has changed now that Benny Snell has oh, been yeah. ejected from the game for making contact with the referee, Chris Coit. Heard Andre's thoughts on... But I don't think he made contact. Chris Coit bent down to reach for Benny Snell. And he didn't want the help, and you toss him for it. That's... That's crazy. One of the best running backs in the SEC is in the locker room. One of the best in the history of college football as the ball now. Justin Jackson still on his feet past the 30-yard line. And if he starts to get hot, look out. Because then the play action comes into, into play. And 
This backup quarterback and Matt Alvidi will certainly need to ride the shoulders of Justin Jackson for a little while here until he gets entrenched in this ball game. 14 yards for the 10th leading rusher in college football history in his last game. This is Matt Alvidi spinning around and he's down at the 34 yard line in relief of Clayton Thorson who had a significant knee injury on a catch that he made from Jeremy Larkin that set up Northwestern on their last drive. They scored a touchdown on the next play, but Thorson in the locker room, two of the biggest stars coming into this one. Northwestern quarterback Thorson Hurt and Kentucky running back Snell ejected. Justin Jackson still on the field trying to find some space as he's bottled up, bottled up by Quentin Bohanna who's had an outstanding year. True freshman along the defensive line. They really needed someone to step in at that position. Lost to graduation, a lot of defensive linemen. And Bohanna has really stepped in, solidified things along the, the defensive line, especially the interior portion of the D-line. And now Josh Pascal is down. Making the start today for Denzel Ware who suspended due to a team violation. Yeah, they're already short, short-handed at defensive end. Tomorrow on ESPN, the New Year's Six continues with two more games. At 4 Eastern, it's the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl. Number 11, Washington, taking on number 9, Penn State. Then at 8, number 6, Wisconsin, battles 10th-ranked Miami in the Capital One Orange Bowl. Both games also available on ESPN Deportes and the ESPN app. Now the New Year's Six begins after us with the Cotton Bowl in Arlington, Ohio State and USC continues tomorrow with those games and finishes up on Monday. Of course, it includes those two semifinal matchups in Pasadena and in New Orleans. So Pascal looks like he's walking to the sideline without much pain. They'll need him back on the football field. Is Matt Alvidi, the backup quarterback, the senior from Park Ridge, Illinois, he has a third and seven. Northwestern just one for five on third down. Hasn't attempted a pass since game five against Penn State. Under pressure will run it for the first down. Pass midfield and down near the 49-yard line where he's tackled by Courtney Love. That's 16 yards. Looked like maybe a face mask. At the very end of that was missed, but you got deep zone drops by Kentucky and a little bit too deep. Now Reedy is able to take take it full advantage take full advantage of it. And if I'm Kentucky, I'm crowding the line of scrimmage, playing the run, and forcing him to beat me. It's a sweep to Nagel and Flynn. He gets past the 45-yard line. As I was saying, just kind of I'm gonna force the hand of Matt Alvidi. Again, keep, try to keep him in third down and long situations and take away Justin Jackson if I can. Already 15, make it 16 rushing attempts so far for Northwestern. And the 17th goes to Jackson. Not much there. That's exactly what Matt House, the defensive coordinator, chose to do. Crowd, the line of scrimmage, 7 8 in the box. A nice play by Josh Allen to bring up another third down situation here for Northwestern. Allen's had three terrific years. He's a true junior and is thinking about the next level. Mark Stoops had lunch with his mother, his girlfriend, and him last week to discuss it. Trying to put on a show here today in Nashville. They go to the ground with Jackson, and he's bottled up at the 42-yard line. Jordan Jones in there on the stop. Boy, and they've got two of the best in the SEC, and Jones and Allen that can make plays sideline to sideline. And remember, we talked about this early in the game. You can pass the 50-yard line for Northwestern. It's dealer's choice on whether they're going to go for it or not on fourth down. And obviously here on a fourth and three, Pat Fitzgerald going to roll the dice a little bit. They converted their first one. Here's their second try. You saw Jones celebrating, had to fly back on the football field to get ready for this. They have to get to the 39. 
incomplete. Derek Beatty gets a hand in there late. And just the timing. Alvidi is a little bit late with the ball. Beatty goes in motion, and he is trailing the intended receiver, but makes enough ground to just get a hand in, give Kentucky the football back. Kentucky forces a turnover on downs. They trail Northwestern 10 to seven in the second quarter in the battle of the Wildcats. Let's look at the hot topics around college football. Brought to you by Outback Steakhouse. You see the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic coming up after us, Andre. Yeah, the battle of the quarterback, Sam Darnold and JT Barrett, two guys that, that's gonna be a good one right, right after we finish up. Then we have the semifinal games on Monday First the Rose Bowl and then the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans. Steven Johnson goes to the ground to Saheem King. Sci-Fi, as they call him, has been the primary backup to Benny Snell all season long. He gets two there, and he's going to have to be the workhorse after Snell was ejected a few minutes ago. Now, we did. We were told that A.J. Rose had a magnificent, a uh, series of bold practices that uh, they, that the coaches talked about. A redshirt freshman from Cleveland, Ohio. So I imagine we're going to see him along with Saheem King. Second and eight. Johnson, and that could be picked off. It is intercepted by Montre Hardage, who got his hands underneath the football after it bounced off a receiver. Yeah, third interception of the year for Hardage, and Steven Johnson has just kind of been off the mark a little bit behind receivers and there you I mean you're getting hit that's one that uh, those just happen off a of receiver's hands both guys trying to make a play Johnson under duress Ross kind of sliding and gets a hand on it and just bad luck and he slips and falls gets that hand on it and as you see at the end of the play Hartage did a great job of getting those hands underneath the football for his eighth career interception. Alvidi loads up as a wide open receiver. That is Charlie Fessler. Well, you have got to get off the hash mark if you're a safety and they're trying to rotate coverage. And they just don't get there in time. Derek Beatty a little bit late in that rotation. 28 yards down to the Kentucky 24. Alvidi's first completion since the middle of October. Late option toss to Jackson. And Jackson takes on tacklers, might have gotten a yard. Taylor, we've seen this in this Kentucky secondary and defense before. The teams start to run the football with a little bit of success, like Northwestern has with Justin Jackson. And it kind of opens them up for explosive plays down the field. Guys get caught peeking in the backfield, maybe thinking about helping on run and run support, and a receiver or two gets behind this secondary. Jackson straight ahead. Jordan Jones wrestles him to the ground. Oh, what a play. It'll be third down. What a play, and a guy that plays with so much intensity. Sometimes too much. He had three personal fouls against Louisville in the regular season finale, but has learned from the mistakes that he made that day. No doubt. Now, I would rather have to calm him down than to try to get him to play with that intensity. Pat so. Fitzgerald said he loved watching him play yeah, for Kentucky. Already has seven tackles in the game. Talk specifically about 34, Jordan Jones. Kentucky needs to get to the 14 with five on the play clock. Make that Northwestern to the 14-yard line. This is Jackson on a third and six, and he has passed that and near the goal line. First and goal for the terrific tailback for the Northwestern Wildcats. Yeah, this is a special player that not a lot of people in the country have had a chance to see. Four consecutive 1,000-yard seasons, and you see why. The ability to make people miss. He is tough between the tackles. And can catch the ball out of the backfield. 43 receptions on the year. 40 career rushing touchdowns. And now a first and goal. There's number 41. Just kind of go 
goes airborne here. His job in the middle, they pull J.B. Butler around and really don't even need the block. It's the athletic ability of Justin Jackson to will himself into the end zone. Third in Big Ten history in career rushing yards. Went to number 10 in college football history today in the second quarter. Archie Griffin won two Eisman trophies. Ron Dane won one. Those are the two guys in front of him in Big Ten history. Gubender gets the extra point up, and Northwestern's lead is double digit suddenly with 17 unanswered points. Montre Hardage with the interception off the bounce. And then Justin Jackson finishes it all. Northwestern on top. Northwestern's up 17 to seven. Justin Jackson already with two touchdown runs in the game. Yeah, you talk about a guy that can run between the tackles, outside. Mention the fact that how well he catches the football, but he is dangerous when he gets in the open field, and rarely do you get to measure him up. Kick it away from Lynn Bowden, and it is taken past the 35-yard line to the 36 it by Cash Daniel. Let's get a studio update. Say hello to Kevin Nagandi. Kevin Nagandi here getting you ready for the Mercedes-Benz halftime report. Coming up, Marty Smith goes one-on-one -on -one with Hunter Renfro. We'll get you ready for the Cotton Bowl with Booger McFarlane and Tim Tebow, plus the craziest bowl game of the season. Back to you guys in Nashville. Man, Wake and Texas A&M in Charlotte today. 107 combined points. Steven Johnson from his own 36-yard line to the sideline to Taven Richardson for a few. Yeah, kind of how they started this game. A couple of big passes to Taven Richardson. Back Kentucky right down inside about the five, and they were able to punch it in. But since then, four punts and then the interception, the turnover. It's been tough going offensively for Kentucky version of the Wildcats. <laughs> it's hard today. You can't use no nicknames. Doubt. No doubt. A.J. Rose in the backfield next to Johnson. Snell ejected from the game two drives ago, and Johnson has no place to go. Nice open field tackle made there by Godwin Igwebuke. Well, it kind of felt like we would see A.J. Rose in this game, certainly with the loss of Benny Snell, and the coach is really praising his is uh, the bowl practices that he's put together. So they get a little, little more extended time tonight. Kentucky's 0 for 4 on third downs today. Where is Juice Johnson? He's been quiet, but there he is. And he's near the 30 yard line. Andre Ware <laughs> on cue with Eddie Grand and Steven Johnson. Well, the guy has been so effective throughout the year on third downs that if I'm Steven Johnson and I'm struggling, I'm going to find a guy that I can rely on. And it's number nine, Juice Johnson, and right on cue, able to pick up a first down and move the chain. 25 yards, he ended a streak of catching a pass in 22 straight. Did not catch one on senior day against Louisville, but in his last game, Makes the big catch to get Kentucky inside the 35. And here's A.J. Rose down near the 30-yard line. Boy, Kentucky's entire ad identity changes, Andre, with Snell out. Well, he just this it's the production, Taylor. When you talk about 559 yards of the 1,300, he came in. 42% of his yardage came after contact. They keep beating that because... That is, it's outstanding. 42% of his rushing yards came after he's engaged a defender. And you can't replace that type of production that Benny Snell brings to the table. Rose with just 14 carries on the season. Number 15 straight ahead. He gets a few more. You, you saw Eddie Grand, the offensive coordinator, in his second season at Kentucky calling the plays. He's the head coach of the offense. Mark Stoops gives him total control. 31 years in coaching. Went to Ole Miss, Auburn, Tennessee, Florida State, Cincinnati. Yeah. A long time Tommy Tuberville assistant. 
I love the guy. Love him, and he is a tribute to college football and all the young men that he gets to work with and certainly makes our jobs a lot, a lot easier from week to week when we get a chance to cover Kentucky. He's had to overcome a lot of adversity this year with Kentucky's offense. Here's a third and five for Johnson who shuffles his feet. Gets rid of it at the last minute, dumping it off in front of Ross. Joe Gaziano on that Kentucky sideline over there, applying all the pressure. Yeah, the big fella. He's their best pass rusher and shows you the pass rushing skills there. A young player who's only going to get better. He led the Big Ten in sacks with eight, eight this year, seven of which came in conference play. So he is only going to get better. A true sophomore. Now, Austin McGinnis has a huge leg, and they are going to go for it. The field goal here with 2.01 left in the second quarter. 71 career field goals, 21 this season, tying his own record from last year. Mark Stoops, irate on the sideline with the officials. Well, I think he's talking about where Steven Johnson was hit after he let the ball go. And now a flag comes in. Uh, Mark Stoops is not on the field. He's not out of the coaching box. Wondering if a player might have said something. Steven Johnson that he was looking at over there, and now Stoops is running back to the huddle. I wonder if, I wonder if someone's down and they're... It does look, look there, like yeah, there is an injury over there. They're looking at a player along the sideline on Kentucky's sideline. The result of the play is an incomplete pass. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, offense, 15-yard penalty, fourth down. Please reset the game clock to two minutes, one second, 2-0-1. Kentucky's having a world of issues with the officials today. Benny Snell ejected, and Mark Stoops here thinks there could be a late hit. Thank Ball's you. gone, and then I don't know. But Steven Johnson, I think, is, is the player that was obviously still down, and he's pleading his case to the official that it should have been a late hit out of bounds. But I don't know. I'm not sure why the... Well, the flag came in if you're holding a conversation with the official and he goes to your sideline and engages in the conversation. Well, it prevents their chances at a 46-yard McGinnis punt, or field goal rather, and Matt Panton has to punt. So you see Johnson going to the locker room, still upset with the officials. So Steven Johnson injured on the bench over there at the end of the play. And now Benny Snell and Steven Johnson are both in the locker room for Kentucky. And then both, on both occasions, Kentucky, the result was a flag and 15-yard penalty, so it takes him out of field goal range. And he asked for Official to come to have a conversation. He actually walked over and took a look at Steven Johnson. Something was said, and then the, the flag was thrown. Meanwhile, Clayton Thorson injured his knee severely. So this is Matt Alvidi, the backup, on his third possession. And down he goes. Sacked in the backfield by the Kentucky Wildcats, as that was Kentucky's Tyler Pat or Calvin Taylor rather that comes in there. And Mick McCall trying to break tendencies with and stop and, and throw the football on first down rather than go with a run to Justin Jackson and allowed Kentucky to get home. And now second and 12. This is a team that's kind of built for being on schedule offensively, especially with Clayton Thorson out of the game at quarterback. A loss of two after the sophomore from Augusta, Georgia, sack of Alvidi. Jackson shows that lateral ability, and he gets up to the 25-yard line. Well, Western does have all three of their timeouts here. How about the balance, Taylor? 
of Justin Jackson. Almost gets clipped, or a, a defender swings and gives the legs of Justin Jackson. I think it was Mike Edwards, and then he's able to when you go through those drills as running backs where one hand's on the ground and kind of bouncing up. Well, he does it to perfection and picked up about another three or four yards because of it. That's Kentucky that calls their first time out with 42 seconds left. The New Year Six continues Monday at 12.30 p.m. Eastern on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app. It's the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, undefeated 12-0, number 12 Central Florida, takes on number seven Auburn at Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta. Scott Frost coaching in his final game for the Knights before he completely takes over for Nebraska. Should be a good one. Uh, Central no Florida saying there was not enough speed in the SEC <laughs> a few weeks ago. I think there's plenty speed, plenty of speed in the SEC. They may get a chance to see the speed of Auburn, but that should shake out to be a pretty good football game. That's off to Scott Frost to finish the job that uh, that he started there with those the entire uh, group of young men. On third and two, Jackson might have been stopped a yard shy of the first down. It's fourth down in Kentucky is going to call their second timeout. Yeah, smart by Mark Stoops. Save some time here to try to put something on the scoreboard before halftime. You're looking to just steal a field goal before you go into the locker room. Certainly, I think Pat Fitzgerald going to put the, put the foot on the ball and punt this one away. Allstate is proud to be part of the team that comes together to do good by contributing to participating universities, general scholarship funds, for each field goal and extra point kicked. To date, Allstate has contributed millions in scholarship funds. Speaking of Allstate, the AFCA Good Hands team, Pat Fitzgerald was named the coach of that team because of his community service this year. And we have one of the 11 players in the game, too, Courtney Love, who won the Werfel Award as college football's top community servant, is also on that team. So congratulations to Love and to Fitzgerald for all they do off the field in their communities. So Charles Walker will stand deep as Hunter Nicewander will attempt his third punch. 39 seconds to go in the second quarter. What has been a dramatic first half. Nicewander angles this one to Walker. And Walker gets a few yards on the return after a 40-yard punt. Again, USC and Ohio State coming up after us tonight at 8.30 Eastern time, just outside of Dallas in Jerry's world. Darnold and Barrett should be a great one between the Pac-12 and Big Ten champions. Nice match. I can't wait to see that one. There's a lot of talent on the field. SC and Ohio State's defense trying to get after Sam Darnold. It'll be a good one. We've got Drew Barker here, 6'3", 200. 20-pound junior quarterback who actually started some games last year. Both starting quarterbacks out of the game after Steven Johnson injured on the bench on the last series. Barker, a 50% passer, throws short to King as there's a flag that comes in. Patty Fisher blowing up Ooh. the end of the play. Personal foul, illegal hands to the face, offense number 71. 15-yard penalty, we play first down. Yeah, Logan Sundberg, the left guard, has been steady all year long and played as a true freshman last year, named to the all-SEC freshman team, but you'll see here that left hand just getting under the face mask of Jordan Thompson, the defensive tackle. That's four personal fouls on Kentucky in the first half. They have been costly. What you thought you could steal maybe three points, get, get a drive starter on first down, and, and then get into your hurry-up offense, now seems like uh, it's going to be impossible. Now they're going to take a look at this to see if there was targeting on the play. Again, just a wild first half here as Drew Barker in at quarterback at the end of the play Fisher comes in making the tackle on King and that's what they're taking a look at it's a great tackle and it's right right in the right between the, the the two twos on the jersey of Sahim King he jumps Patty Fisher's coming in late right there 
right on time, and I don't see anything wrong with that tackle. They saw the head snap back of Sahim King, but that's a good tackle. The officials are always cautious about leading with your helmet. And it looked like that happened at the end of the play, but as you said, at least traditionally, that's always been seen as a textbook tackle. So both quarterbacks are in the locker room. Significant injury to Clayton Thorson on a 24-yard catch. Looked like he sustained a serious right knee injury. While Steven Johnson has been taken to the locker room after the last offensive possession. Benny Snell ejected the top running back for Kentucky. And now we have Drew Barker and Matt Alvidi, number seven for each Wildcat squad. Poss as backup quarterbacks in the game. Possibly Patty Fisher if they see it differently than I do uh, with a targeting penalty who has or averages 9.2 tackles per game for Northwestern. He only has, only has three today, but there's a lot of football left to be played. He had the most tackles in one college football game this year. He had 14 solo tackles against Michigan State. Just an outstanding redshirt freshman year. Replacing Anthony Walker, the All-American that left early for the National Football League after last season. So just 22 seconds left in the half with Northwestern up by 10 trying to get to the locker room and hoping that Patty Fisher can come out of it in the second half. I'm ready to get to the locker room myself. <laughs> Let's get there. After review, there are fouls by both teams on the play. Targeting defense number 42. Number 42 is disqualified. Personal foul, illegal hands to the face, offense number 71. The penalty's offset. Replay first down. Andre, if you were to name five players that were most significant in this game, Fisher, Snell, Johnson, and Thorson would all be on that list, and they're all out of the game. I, I, I don't see, I don't see it on that play. And I'm, I'm an offensive player. I mean, I, 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 I favor the offense Time in most out, situations. Their first of the half. You would think, 30 but seconds uh, in length. I just, I don't see it on that on that tackle. Big blow for Fisher to be out. Nate Hall not playing in this game today. Was injured with a lower body injury in bowl practice. So now two backup linebackers are playing for Northwestern. You see all the guys that are now out of this football game. Yeah, Pat, Pat Fitzgerald's talking to Mr. Coit there about, you know, back in his day, that's a great tackle. And even I, I think even in today's game, when you're trying to protect players, I, I just didn't, I don't see the targeting. I see the face, the upper part of the face mask between the two and the two on the jersey of Sahim King. Now, Andre, we go on the field before every game. We love doing that. And oh, man, that was fun hands, today. Shaking hands with both coaches and the officials, and we always wish everyone well and hope they have a great game. I don't know that this has been Chris Coit in the Pac-12 officiating crew's finest hour. Hey, man, brother, I second that one. And, you know, I, I don't, I don't like getting on the officials, but when you, you should call the game and not be a part of it. And they have been way too much involved tonight. Parker again underneath the king, who finally steps out of bounds with 14 seconds left. Uh, you may have an opportunity to take a shot or two, depending on what you get here on second down if you're Drew Barker. Has some experience. Started last year as the starter before giving way to Steven Johnson. And uh, Steven Johnson has never looked back. He had a significant back injury that happened in the Florida game. He did play against New Mexico State the third game of the season last year, and as you mentioned, was out for the year. Steven Johnson has been the starter ever since. Parker eludes the sack, throws down the field, and that is caught by Kwan Ross. 
This is an NFL field, but can't get up and run in a college game. That's 16 yards. Well, they got to hurry yeah, or go ahead and spend the time out here. They do exactly that. They take the time out. So now he'll have one play in which to try to buy some time and allow receivers to get to the end zone. Now they've got K1 Ross, who is 6'6", who I would love in a jump ball situation, and then Taven Richardson, who's at 6'3", is another. Be sure to see Star Wars, The Last Jedi, now playing in theaters and IMAX everywhere. The V crew, as we're called, yeah, we got a on chance college to football. See. We went and saw it in Montgomery before we called the Raycom Media Camellia Bowl. Loved it. Now, with seven seconds, they could straddle the sideline, Andre, and get eight or nine yards. Uh, Austin McGinnis' career long is 54 yards. He did make a 53-yarder this year it has got against to, Missouri. It has got to be super quick, Taylor, with just seven seconds left on the clock. I, I, I got to feel like they're going to go ahead and take the, the Hail Mary approach here. Unless you can – you got Juice Johnson here on a quick out that maybe you can – get that executed with about three or four seconds left and then you all of a sudden Hardage just walked over there so that gets taken away and now Northwestern seeing the alignment calls their second timeout yeah, that's just good coaching right there by Pat Fitzgerald can't go home with timeouts you're gonna let me see the formation so now I know exactly how I'm going to defend it Mark Stoops, eight and three in one score games since the start of last season. Has watched the opposition three times attempt Hail Marys on the last play of the game in those one score games, and they got away with wins in each of those games. Trying to turn this program around. He's done an outstanding job so far in his five years but says the next step is to truly compete to win the SEC East beginning next season. I'll tell you what, Georgia is rolling right now, and they are rolling so well, and it is festering into early signing period. Barker will try the Hail Mary, but he gets hit as he throws, and that's Joe Gaziano again that applied the pressure to end the first half. Northwestern scores 17 unanswered points after Kentucky scored on the first possession of the game. We've had ejections, serious injuries, and all kinds of controversy in the first half. We just couldn't protect Drew Barker long enough to allow that to develop where he could even get a shot, get a shot down the field delivered. Olivia has Pat Fitzgerald. Thank you, Coach. A lot of drama. You just lost Patty Fisher. I know he's a big piece of your defense. How does that change things on that side of the ball? Well, what a great opportunity for Nathan Fox. It's his time, you know, and same thing with Matt Alviti. That's uh, what we built our program on, next man up, and hopefully our character will shine through here in the second half. After Clayton Thorson's injury, I saw you gather the team. What did you say to them after losing their leader? Well, I told him what Clayton said to me, and uh, we'll, we'll keep that between us for right now. But uh, he's a heck of a competitor and a great young man, and I expect Matt to go out and play a great 30 minutes for him. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Go Cats. We'll take some backup. Great play from backups in order for Northwestern to win their eighth consecutive game. They lead 17-7. to Let's send it to the studio. This halftime report is presented by Mercedes-Benz, the best or nothing. As promised, Wake Forest taking on Texas A&M. Belt Bowl, the craziest bowl game so far this season. Just over two minutes to play, A&M leading. And Wake on third and goal, Matt Colburn. They're up 55-52. The last chance for A&M on fourth down. Going deep. Nope, Nick Starkle, his pass incomplete. Wake holds on, 55-52, nearly 1,300 yards. Here's Joey and Jesse's st standings in the Capital One Bowl mania. 
following Wake's Wild when Joey closed the gap a bit on Jesse. Palmer still leads the way by nearly 30 points. I'll be glad when this is over so I do not have to see Joey dance anymore. I'm tired of seeing Galloway <laughs> he dance. He told me he got those moves from you, Booger. Uh, he didn't get the best ones then. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight we'll have the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic from AT&T Stadium in Arlington. Jerry's World, that's ahead on Sports Center. San Darnold and number eight USC squaring off against JT Barrett, number five Ohio State. This one should be pretty exciting. That's all coming up after the contest. Sports Center, midnight. Welcome back to Capital One Bowl Mania. You're watching the Franklin American Mortgage Music City Bowl as part of Capital One Bowl Mania. Northwestern with 17 unanswered points leads Kentucky as we get ready for the start of the third quarter. We are shaking our heads at what we just <laughs> witnessed in the first half. Yeah. He's Andre Ware. I'm Taylor Zarser. Olivia Harlan is on the field. Twitter's losing its mind right now. We've had ejections. We've had significant injuries. A lot of craziness in the first half. Yeah, it really has. I mean, just uh, you just don't know how to handle what what went on in the first half of this ball game? Yeah, Thorson, Clayton Thorson, the quarterback, with a serious right knee injury there. Benny Snell gets ejected for this, I guess you call it, contact with the referee. So his season ends. Steven Johnson gets tackled out of bounds, hurt on the play, goes to the locker room. We'll see if he's able to go in the second half. And then Patty Fisher, best linebacker for Northwestern, ejected for that controversial targeting Call. Almost all of those were questionable. Yeah, the injury you can't do anything about. That just happens, and it's part of football. But to say that a player contacted an official when you initiated it as the official yourself is just unreal, and especially when it's video evidence to s so we see what actually went on. I I've never seen anything like that to eject a player. In that sense, you get a warning or some sort of of some sort, but uh, that was just ridiculous, and it just changed the course of the game. Then the Patty Fisher uh, targeting penalty, that, I don't know what a form tackle is anymore. I really don't. And I thought I had a pretty good bead on what targeting was. That looked like a pretty good form tackle to me. You could truly argue, I'll say it again, that four of the five best players in the game are either injured or ejected. We'll see if Steven Johnson's able to come out when Kentucky gets the football back. This is Larkin from his own end zone, and he's back out near the 28-yard line. A moment ago, Olivia Harlan spoke to Kentucky coach Mark Stoops. Thank you, Coach. First of all, how is Steven Johnson, and what happened on that play? He'll, he'll, he'll be okay. He got hurt. He was hurt. I don't think they knew he was hurt. He was in the, he was uh, on the border of being in play, and. Uh, and I was thinking about going for it. So uh, he was injured laying there, and so there was a lot of confusion there. Also a lot of confusion on the Benny Snell ejection call. How did the refs explain that to you? The, the official told me that Benny grabbed him and uh, grabbed his arms. And I was told that that wasn't the case. I don't know. I can't worry about that. But if, 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 we, if we grabbed an official, then he should be ejected. If he didn't, then I'm not sure. We'll have to deal with it later. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. You don't know what the – you can't do anything about it if it's an incorrect call, but it takes Snell out of the game. The one constant through all this game has been Justin Jackson, who's now the 10th leading rusher in college football history. He has 93 rushing yards after seven more on the last play. Backup quarterback Matt Alviti with an accurate pass on the slant route there to Jace James. It's first down. And Alviti has thrown a couple of nice balls. Uh, in his time in the ball game, he came in as a 63% passer, completing 7 of 11 on the year and the one touchdown pass uh, in the Duke game. But uh, he's, he's looked sharp. 40-yard line now, and on the sweep, that is Jelani Roberts, who had a 12-yard first down run a little earlier, might have gotten a yard there. Not big in stature, but certainly quick. And they love to use him quick the screen game and then speed sweeps like that play. He's done a nice job tonight. Two touchdowns on the year uh, for Jelani Roberts. Ultimate by committee group at wide receiver this year after losing the Big Ten Rookie of the Year. Receiver of the Year, rather, Austin Carr last year. Jackson, look at that effort, gets nine more. And he's so 
patient, just allowing things to kind of set themselves. Waiting for his right guard to pull and get, get around. And then all of a sudden you see the explosiveness. You never get, you never get to line him up. Jackson's so, so good at just putting you where he wants you to go. See, he went over 100 on the last play. It looked like Quentin Bohanna may have jumped early, but the call's not made. Alvidi does get the first down, and Northwestern in Kentucky territory. Again, they've scored 17 unanswered points. Kentucky came out guns blazing, scored on the first drive. It's been all Wildcats since. That's Northwestern Wildcats <laughs> in the battle of the Wildcats today. Just can't do it. I mean, you can't <laughs> use the nicknames tonight. Yep. Get lots of Tigers and Wildcats playing each other especially in bowl games and college football. This is the second ever meeting between these two schools. First since 1928. Alvidi on first down, play action. Late throw, and it's almost picked off as Mike Edwards stepped in front of Bowman, the intended receiver. Yeah, leads the team with intercept, four interceptions and 90 tackles, and he is just a... a a, the, kind of the quarterback on the back end. The guy that's had, he's got tremendous range. And watch this play here. Leaves his area of the zone to make the play inside of himself. That's 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 good work. Jackson spins ahead to the 45. It'll be third down. Perfect position for Kentucky. Now finish the job if you're the Kentucky Wildcats and get off the field here on third down. Northwestern, their third medium, somewhat medium when you add, add about a yard to it, third and seven, but this is where Kentucky can do a lot of things. You can choose to bring pressure, speed up the decision-making of Matt Alvedi. Has been steady and relief of Thorson. And he throws the first down pass on a third and seven to Jace James for 11 yards. It's been proven now to Matt House that if you give Matt Alvedi time, he can beat you with his arm, and he can go through his progressions and his reads. That's a nice job. What a nice route run by Jace James, the true freshman receiver from Carroll Stream, Illinois. See him a little swagger there, wearing the mustache today. Got lots of confidence here in his last college football game. Didn't know he would play given Thorson's great season. But here he is in relief going for the home run ball, and it's incomplete. Intended for Garrett Dickerson. Clayton Thorson coming out of the tunnel now. Caught a 24-yard pass from Jeremy Larkin on a trick play. His right leg buckled. I just hate to see that. Yeah. Talented young man, a junior at 6'4", 225. And a lot of people say that he's going he's gonna to play on Sundays. This is Larkin on a second and 10. And he's trapped after two yards. Courtney Love with the tackle. So much credit for what he does off the field has been the team leader for Kentucky and Mark Stoops on defense. Yeah, and the last third down situation, defensive coordinator Matt House chose to go zone coverage. I would bet he's going to speed things up here and bring, find a way to bring some pressure on Matt Alvedi. You give him time, he's been able to convert. He did it on a third and seven. A couple of plays ago, this a third and eight. There comes the pressure. Jordan Jones can't get to him. Alvini escapes, and he gets about six. It'll be fourth down. And it's enough for Pat Fitzgerald will go for it here. They're not going to trot the kicker on the field here. He told us when uh, we get he gets past the 50-yard line, he's not afraid to go for it. And 62% on the year in converting on fourth down. And to your point, Charlie Kubander's long on the season is just 40 yards, so they're not really in his range yet. They have to get to the 24-yard line. They're one for two on fourth down today. This is their 37th attempt this season. Alvidi escapes the pressure, dumps it off underneath, incomplete. 
They say Flynn Nagel trapped it with the grass. And Alvidi took a shot. Josh Pascal arrived just a little bit as the ball, right before the ball was released. You, uh, as the backup, protect yourself because it's a fall, far fall when you go there when you, if he's to get hurt. Kentucky takes over on a turnover on downs, down 10. As one tough young man, Steven Johnson, who went to the locker room after a couple of big hits he took, wasn't able to finish the first half, but he's back on the field now. Can't question his toughness. Jordan Thompson with a lick there, and then Joe Gaziano on the sideline. That's the the uh, the hit that sent Steven Johnson to the locker room, but here he is, 8 of 16, 123 yards, and, of course, the tipped interception. Sahim King, in relief of Benny Snell, gets the edge, breaks tackles, stays on his feet, and is out of bounds near the 45-yard line. That's 12 yards. It could have been a loss of five. Yeah, he's usually used, Taylor, as the change-up back to Benny Snell, the hard-running downhill runner. And Sahim King comes in, adds an element of speed. Now, all of a sudden, he finds himself as the primary back. Snell ejected on one of the most questionable personal foul calls you'll ever see. King and Rose in relief. And now Johnson delivers to Taven Richardson, who's had a big day today. That's his fourth catch. Well, nice grabs by Richardson. And I really, really like him. He's a good-looking young player, just a sophomore. Greer, South Carolina, Burns High School. Good football school or his high school, pretty good program there. Yeah, everybody all season, Andre told us that he was the most improved receiver on the team from his freshman year to his sophomore year, tripled his product production. Most consistent receiver is how Eddie Grant described it. Play action. Johnson, deep ball. And Kwan Ross at least initially is given a catch inside the 20-yard line. Now you hurry up, press the gas, and go ahead and get this thing snapped. There's the look, underthrown a little bit. K1 Ross, that's a grab. Incredible. Whether, whether they review it or not, it's a catch. 37 yards and an amazing job to be able to get that. Lynn Bowden makes the catch. As you said, Kentucky goes really quick and gets a couple of yards. Let's take another look at this amazing catch by the senior from Westchester, Ohio. You see him sliding here. And it's a heck of a job in terms of concentration. Not sure it was enough as the defender slides in front of the hook, enough to overturn it if it weren't. It's now second and eight in the red zone. Johnson near the end zone. Up the ladder goes Richardson, first and goal. Well, this young man is having some coming out party. Whoever the quarterback turns out, turns out to be next year, or next spring, maybe next fall going into the season, he has got one heck of a receiver and a weapon in Taven Richardson. Five catches for 89 yards, and how about the guts of Steven Johnson after missing the last couple of drives due to injuries. I'd go there again. Nice matchup in the corner here. Instead, Steven will keep it himself. It's touchdown, Kentucky. By the defense able to get themselves off the field. And then the offense comes back to life with Steven Johnson back in the game, leading the way. This little uh, read option decides to keep it. He walks in the corner to get uh, the Kentucky Wildcats right back in this game. You think this fires Big Blue Nation up oh, when your no, team leader no goes to the locker room after an injury and comes out on the field and marches down on the first drive of the third quarter? No doubt about it. Showing you some toughness. Kentucky with their second touchdown of the day. Down three in Nashville, thanks to their team leader in his final game for Big Blue.
the Franklin American Mortgage Music City Bowl. Brought to you by Franklin American Mortgage. It all begins with home. Visit musiccity.com. And great clips. With Clip Notes, you get your same great haircut every time, anywhere. Great clips. It's gonna be great. Northwestern has had a fantastic time in Nashville. You saw redshirt freshman Jesse Mailer holding the belt for winning the Nashville Hot Chicken competition. Team took in some great karaoke as well. Northwestern's had an outstanding trip to Nashville. They're holding on to a 17-14 lead over Kentucky after the Wildcats of UK's second touchdown of the day. Let's go quickly to Olivia. Guys, that wing contest got pretty heated, excuse the pun, but Mike Edwards for Kentucky only ate three, but he's adamant that he thought it'd be wings, not breaded tenders. He's a little <laughs> upset about it, and it was really spicy, but Courtney Love said, no, we just had little guys competing. <laughs> Uh, good times at bowl games. You guys had a lot of fun here. McGinnis's kick is fielded inside the five by J.R. Pace. And Pace is past the 30. Good field position for Northwestern. Studio update down to the Big Easy and Kevin Nagandi. Kevin Nagandi with his studio update presented by Great Clips. The craziest bowl game of the season. Belt Bowl, Wake Forest, Matt Colburn scores to go ahead late in this one. Wake Forest beats Texas A&M 55-52. Incredible game that preceded us today in the Queen City of Charlotte. What a season for Wake Forest. Deeks win eight games this year. Kicking off the A&M Aggies, now Jimbo Fisher will take over that program. Flynn Nagel makes the catch from Alvidi just short of the 40-yard line where the man they call the Badger, Mike Edwards, makes the tackle. Yeah, nice quick read, flat slant combination. He read it perfectly. Mike Edwards had hung up inside and able to find Flynn Nagel for a uh, pretty good pickup here of six yards. Edwards loves Tyran Matthew, his biggest influence as a football player. And adopted his nickname and his hairstyle. Justin Jackson right near the first down marker. So we check in with Olivia again. Yeah, guys, Clayton Thorson on the sideline with crutches and a towel over his head. The good news is he did not have to go to the hospital and he'll get an MRI tomorrow. Pulling hard for that guy. He's a tremendous person who has taken his leadership to a new level this season. And you hate to see his season come to an end that way. Jackson short of the first down, so third and very short, and Alvidi plows forward for the first. Mick McCall not going to mess around with Kentucky's defensive line. It's a nice quarterback sneak to pick up the first down. Senior from Park Ridge, Illinois, who played in four games this year, had not attempted a pass since the fifth game of the season against Penn State. He's 4 of 8 for 50 yards and has run it for 29. This time it's Jackson over 100 already and it's another first down run inside the 40. He cuts off the block of Tommy Doles and this kind of sets things up. He, he is a patient runner. We talked about that earlier. But watch him run off the block of number 71 as he pulls out. Nice kick out block. Sets the defense to the outside. Cuts back in. He just has a feel for how to set up blocks. 15 more for the man playing in his last football game today. And he gets a few. Northwestern is over 200 rushing yards now on the day compared to Kentucky, who just has 41. And there you see Jackson on the all-time rushing list, passing former Southern Miss running back Damian Fletcher today. He's got a ways to go to catch Cedric Benson, but who knows? He went way over 200 yards in the Pinstripe Bowl last season. Fletcher doing it back between 2006 and 2009. This is Larkin, and a flag comes in at the end of the play as he's inside the 25-yard line. Only the second Northwestern penalty if in fact it goes against the boys from Evanston. 
personal foul, chop block, offense number 72 and 59. 15-yard penalty, replay second down. Now that's something this offensive line of Northwestern, they will do that. I mean, he, he was, Pat Fitzgerald actually was kidding with us when he said, hey, you guys in the SEC, they, they don't, they don't chop, they don't go down low. You know, you just decide, shake hands during the game to where you're just going to man up and, and push one another off the ball. They uh, they are not afraid to go down and take your legs out, but you can't do it as a tandem. They certainly do it pretty good when they single single you up on the defensive line. Yeah, individual cut blocking yes. is what they coach at Northwestern. So a second and 21 now back near the 50-yard line. Alvidi on the option keeps it himself. Look at the wheels on the senior quarterback inside the 35. Alvidi's just kind of been waiting to be unleashed. He says, free me. Let, me, let me run the rock. Right here, nice job of reading it out. Blocks get out in front of him. Garrett Dickerson, the, the uh, super back, throws a nice block for Alvidi and certainly capitalizing, getting it back to a manageable situation here in third and five. Seven for 45 yards. He got 16 there, and he gives way to Larkin to lose the first tackle and the extra effort gets him about a couple yards away from the first down so it should be about fourth and two here but a late flag has come in sure a little extra curricular going on on the sideline here we had we mentioned the three personal fouls that Jordan Jones had against Louisville after the play unsportsmanlike conduct Defense, number 34, his first of the game. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. You know, one thing I'll say about that is, is if, it, if it continues to happen, and it, as it has with Jordan Jones, you develop an, a reputation, and then officials start to look for that stuff. They threw the flag, as you see, before he patted the head of Larkin but pushes his head there, and that's what drew the foul. Oh, boy. You start to look. You, you get a target on you when you do that. You, you react in that type of behavior week in and week out. Gives Northwestern the ball inside the 20. Justin Jackson searching for his third rushing touchdown is inside the five as we have more laundry on the field. 84. 10-yard penalty. Replay first down. Cameron Green, one of their all-purpose tight ends, they call them superbacks, called for the holding penalty here. Yeah, watch number 84 right there. You got a big hand around the shoulder of Josh Pascal. The official's right on top of that one. Pascal's, he is a load. <laughs> Put an H back or a super back, whatever you want to call him, one on one with that true freshman. That's that's a tall order. He had three significant penalties in the last five plays, and Flynn Nagel is lit up over there. Make that Riley Lee's, excuse me, lit up by Derek Beatty. And I'm going back to the quarterback saying, "Hey, don't leave me out to dry like this if I'm Riley Lee's. Get that baby down a little bit where I can make a play and, and protect myself in a hurry because." Derek Beatty, I don't know how that's any different than the play that we got a chance to see Patty Fisher make in the sec in the second quarter earlier in the ball game. No word from upstairs yet. And they let it go. Justin Jackson. To the 23-yard line where Mike Edwards makes the tackle. And I say that to say that both both hits were clean. The, that hit by Derek Beatty was clean. I thought the play, the uh, the tackle by Patty Fisher was clean. Just don't know how you tackle anymore. And, and just to put a bow on Fisher's ejection, his head came down, but he did not lead with his helmet, and that's what made everyone <laughs> on social media go crazy with Fisher's ejection. Third and 17, just inside the 25, and they blow it dead. Well start. Part of the snap, false start. Offense, number 70, 
five yard penalty, still third down. Northwestern had one penalty in the game before this drive. They've had three in the last few minutes. I just kind of got a circle, set, settle everybody down, and there he is right there, Rashawn Slater. Just getting a little bit early, and he's got a pretty good pass rusher over the top of him and Josh Allen, so he's trying to get an early start, and I know that young man's father very well. I'll get into that story, but <laughs> a heck of an NBA player Reggie Slater was. Western kind of in no man's land as Jackson almost lost the football as he gets to the 26-yard line where Jamar Boogie Watson makes the tackle. So it's fourth down, and again, Charlie Kubander, his career long, is 40 yards. And Boogie almost jarred the ball loose. His job of getting his hands back on that thing to protect it. They will officially say this is a 43-yard try, and again, this will be the longest of the freshman's career. And he misses it wide right. So after a 10 play drive for Northwestern, it ends with no points. Kentucky gets off the football field after Kubander's miss. UK down three. Northwestern up three. Let's go down to Olivia Harlan. Guys, I want you to meet someone very important in this Northwestern program. He's a strength coach slash hype man, Alex Spanos. He's a 25-year-old. He became famous while wearing a very tight polo with no coat in a blustery cold game against Minnesota. Coach Fitz laughed and said, hey, I'm not that tough, and he doesn't know why he does it. But Coach Spanos told me if I'm warm and comfortable, I might not be in point. I want to be uncomfortable to stay on my toes. Guys, he starts every day at 4.30 a.m. with a six-egg omelet, so if you're looking to look like him, that's how you do it. <laughs> he says it's not a medium. He wants to be clear. <laughs> it is a large polo that he is wearing out there in 30-degree temperatures. The rarely used tight end, Justin Rigg, makes the catch. And another first down for Kentucky. Yeah, they've had to, had to go about it the hard way with C.J. Conrad, one of the better tight ends in the SEC, was injured. Rig now, you know, there wasn't much, a whole lot of production at that position when he was injured. That's only his second catch of the season. To your point, the two tight ends, Hart and Rig, combined for five catches this year. And now this is A.J. Rose on the swing pass out of the backfield. How important, Taylor, is the quarterback position? And I think Steven Johnson just kind of defines that for the Kentucky Wildcats. Went out of the game since he's come back 6 of 6, 80 yards and a rushing touchdown. But not only has he had, had an effect on the offensive side of the ball, the defense has stepped up and started to play well. So it's been across the board for Kentucky since Steven Johnson's come back in this ballgame. And he's going to put up four fingers. He's got one quarter left as the quarterback of the Kentucky Wildcats. There is no doubt this team feeds off of his leadership. Northwestern trying for their eighth consecutive win and a 10-win season clinging to a three-point lead against Kentucky. We're in beautiful Nashville, Tennessee for the 20th playing of the Franklin American Mortgage Music City Bowl. Northwestern leads Kentucky 17-14. Here's what's at stake. Kentucky going for their first eight-win season in 10 years. Northwestern's looking for their fifth 10-win season in school history. Pat Fitzgerald is third as a head coach, fourth that he's been part of. He was a player on the 1995 10-win team. Northwestern, if they win, will have 27 wins in three years. That's the best stretch since 1903 through 05. Long way to the finish line for both these teams. 15 minutes is a lot an eternity in a football game. 
Benny Snell ejected in the second quarter. Not playing for Kentucky. Steven Johnson gets hit as he throws. Ball out. No whistle yet. And still on the ground as Joe Gaziano's the one that applied the pressure. Three or four different Wildcats of Kentucky and Northwestern had a shot at it. Steven Johnson is slow to get up. It looks like Kentucky's got the football, but tell you what, don't ever question the toughness of Steven Johnson. Shoulder is took him out of this game early. He had, he just took a shot. I thought he was actually throwing the football. The arms coming for he draws it back, throws it's coming forward. I thought it would have been an incomplete pass. There's no question that ball was and going forward there as Gaziano applied the, the pressure, but the fumble recovery is made by the left tackle Kyle Meadows. Gaziano is some player. 6'4", 280, shows some. When you look at him, you don't think he's as quick as he is off the line of scrimmage, but, man, is he some, some player for just... Just a sophomore, second team all Big Ten. Led the Big Ten in sacks with eight. I mentioned earlier, seven of those, seven of the eight came in conference play. So you're doing it against the big boys week in and week out. Replay officials are going to take a look at this to confirm that it was an incomplete pass. Again, the ruling on the field was a fumble recovered by Kentucky, but getting another look at it it appears that Steven Johnson's arm is going forward I thought in real speed it was an incomplete pass and in here I'm almost certain that's what it is but I've been wrong once tonight already <laughs> there's a lot of people watching this game Andre that would argue you were right in the first half when Patty Fisher was ejected for targeting on what was a questionable call Fisher out for the game. Nate Hall out with an injury during bowl practice. So Northwestern with two backup linebackers and Nathan Fox and Warren Long that have been forced into duty today. That man, Steven Johnson, missed a couple of series due to a huge hit he took from Gaziano in the first half. Snell ejected for targeting. And you had, of course, the injury to Clayton Thorson. It's been a wild game in Nashville. To say the least. officiating crew and again the replay officials here upstairs trying to determine if in fact this will be a third and nine for Kentucky just 29 seconds into the fourth quarter after review with control of the ball the quarterback threw the pass it was incomplete it'll be third down please reset the game clock to 1356 I'd like to state. Excuse me, 1456. Thank you. I'd like to state for the record that no one has an issue with the call that was just overturned. <laughs> Not in this booth. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first incompletion for Steven Johnson, and he's out of the game again as Drew Barker is back on the field. Yeah, he took a pretty good shot from Joe Gaziano there, was exposed, and was already on shaky ground after the. The hit on the sideline that uh, caused a shoulder injury to begin with. Barker's two for two for 16 yards passing. In this game so far, this a third and nine for Kentucky. They are just one for seven on this down today. And he overthrows Ali. It's fourth down. And it's just a belief that when Steven Johnson is on the field, he, he elevates everybody's play around him. And uh, Drew Barker's got to get to that, that place in his play where you believe that you're, you've got a shot to win with a guy, whomever it is, under center. And you just feel that from Steven Johnson. Matt Panton with his sixth punt today. Fair catch called for by Flynn Nagel. 
inside his 15-yard line. Capital One Bowl Mania rolls on with a couple more games tomorrow, noon Eastern on ESPN. It's Louisville and Lamar Jackson the taking man. on Mississippi State in the Tax Slayer Bowl. And on ABC at 1230 Eastern, 930 a.m. Pacific, Iowa State takes on Memphis in the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. Both of these games also available on the ESPN app. It was a joy to be around Lamar Jackson calling his final regular season game. Louisville crush these Kentucky Wildcats. Keep counting them out. You just keep knocking them down, Lamar. I don't get it. I don't get why I don't so get many people think he won't be a quarterback at the next level. <laughs> Unbelievable. Justin Jackson trapped for a moment in the backfield, but almost impossible to wrestle him down for a loss. He gets four more. Some of those same people thought uh, Deshaun Watson would be would go later than he did, and the Texans trade up to number 12 and pick him, and all he did was throw 19 touchdowns in six games. You've been the radio analyst for every Texans game in their history, and you watched Deshaun Watson have a terrific season before he was injured. Matt Alvidi on the run again, and he has shown off the wheels today. He has run, run for over 50 yards. He had 88 yards rushing on the season coming in. In fact, had a 68-yard run against Bowling Green earlier this season. That's clearly the backup senior quarterback strength. I'll tell you what, I like his body language. He, he just kind of exudes that he can get the job done. See, And he's had a lot of positive plays in his time on the field here tonight. It's nine more there. Oh, back the other way. Oh, my God. And it's Jackson, and they do trap him in the backfield. Darius West, the safety, comes up. See Tamir DuBose as well in there. Well, they decide to run blitz. With all the success that Justin Jackson has had tonight, they bring an extra defender around the line of scrimmage in the form of Darius West and corral and plant him from in, outside in to make sure he doesn't get outside of contain. There's some help coming from inside out. Second and 13 after a three-yard loss for Jackson, who has 133 yards rushing today. The option pitch to him, and Josh Allen takes him on. It's third down. What a player. Mentioned at sixth in the SEC in sacks this year. A guy that can play certainly play sideline to sideline, and not just because of the number. But he reminds me a lot of Zach Cunningham that played at Tennessee at uh, Vanderbilt a year ago, also a Houston Texan. He led the SEC in tackles a year ago, but uh, hey, what Josh Allen is is one heck of a player. That long athletic build at 6'5", 230, could stand to put on another 10. 10 pounds or so. Alvidi and Northwestern have to get to the 38. Empty backfield on third and 11, and he overshoots Macon Wilson. Chris Westry in pretty good coverage along that side, and Kentucky once again going to get off the field, and it'll be interesting to see if Steven Johnson comes back into this football game. Johnson banged up a couple of times today by Joe Gaziano. Nice wonder on to punt for the fourth time. Charles Walker, third in the country in punt return average, hasn't had much of a chance so far today. He's got one here. Almost nothing doing, gets a couple back after a 46-yard punt. Kentucky with a chance to tie or take the lead, down three. Last year at the Pinstripe Bowl, Tyler Lancaster and his family's life changed as his father, Brad, felt some pain in his mouth at the game. A malignant tumor was found in his father's mouth, and stage four cancer was discovered. His father was on the field for senior day on November the 18th and is in the press box today watching his son. We are all fighting with you, Mr. Lancaster, and certainly thinking of Tyler and his entire family. When that num the number one is worn by Tyler Lancaster. It's voted on by his teammates and pretty big honor to wear that jersey number. 
Zaheem King bouncing around has no place to go, and Warren Long making his first ever start at outside linebacker in relief of the injured Nate Hall. Guy that transitioned from running back on the tackle. For more on Tyler Lancaster, let's go to Olivia. Yeah, Taylor. Tyler said it was a tidal wave of emotion, and his mom, Bonnie, tries to not tell him the day-to-day pain that his dad's in or the procedures they have to go through. Let him keep his focus on school and football. But Coach Fitzgerald was just so impressed with how he's handled it. What a catch that is made there by Juice Johnson. Haven't seen a lot of him today, but two big catches for the man playing in his last game. Kentucky's top receiver gets 12. Yeah, did it on third down to keep a drive moving earlier in this game here on second down. Nice comeback route and a curl to keep himself between the ball and the defender. Nice play to move the chains. Steven Johnson in and out of the game, but has been terrific throwing the ball down the field, looking for Juice Johnson again. He's double covered. Yeah, sometimes when within a game, you know that you need a play to be made. Juice Johnson is is that individual. For me, it was Jason Phillips, James Dixon. When I needed to have a play made at, at the University of Houston, those two guys always seem to make a play when, when needed. It hasn't mattered today. Nine different receivers have caught a pass for Kentucky as Steven Johnson and Andrew Barker have spread the wealth. of the backfield, the fake to King, and over the middle to Bowden. He can't make the catch. Long in coverage. Yeah, it hung up in the air a while and did not get to the hands of, of Lynn Bowden fast enough because Steven Johnson had to throw this off his back foot. You see him here never really getting to set to step and really drill that ball to get anything on it where B B Bowden could actually make a play. I'm sure Lynn would say he should have made that catch. Kentucky one for seven on third down today. Needing a conversion here. Johnson under pressure escapes on the run in front of Juice Johnson. He can't make the catch. Fighting and scratching and a little bit too long of a fourth down situation with 10.51 left in the game for Mark Stoops to even entertain going for it. So you're going to rely on your defense once again to, to get a stop and get you the football back. Seventh punt for Matt Panton after Sam Duke Miller, another terrific freshman in, from Andre Ware country in Houston, applied that pressure. Nagel makes the catch, takes on two defenders, and dives ahead near the 25-yard line. Northwestern clinging to a three-point lead. TV. The Franklin American Mortgage Music City Bowl. Brought to you by Franklin American Mortgage. It all begins with home. Gaylord Opryland Resort. Everything in one place so you can have it all. And the Quicksilver card from Capital One. Earn unlimited 1.5% cash back every purchase, everywhere. You include those sponsors, and the commitment to this bowl game is as high as any in college football. Franklin American Mortgage Fan Zone started yesterday and still is going on till 9.30 tonight on historic Broadway in downtown Nashville. Activities included both bands, pep rallies, live music, Hattie B's Hot Chicken Eating World huh. Championship that we watched a little earlier. Scott Ramsey and everyone connected to this bowl game deserve a round of applause no for doubt. what they have done in the 20 years of this game. Just an outstanding job. A good gift bag that they uh, <laughs> they furnish as well. And then you look at Hattie B's, boy, that'll heat you up, won't it? You'll start sweating, that's for oh, sure. No doubt. Jeremy Larkin spelling Justin Jackson standing next to Matt Alvedi in the backfield. And Larkin, who might be the man next year, says, how about this year? Into the clear. Inside the 10. Mike Edwards prevents the touchdown as Larkin goes wild. Came in, fresh set of legs, and explosive plays once again haunting 
the Kentucky Wildcats, this time in the form of a run by Jeremy Larkin, the red shirt freshman from Cincinnati, Ohio. 64 yards for him on that carry. And Northwestern Western is gashing Kentucky on the ground for over 300 yards. Alvidi just throws it in front of Riley Lee's incomplete. Riley Lee didn't want any part of that one. He said, hey, I'm going to let this one go. I took a shot earlier in the game from Derek Payton. Forget about that. You see here the production. Larkin over 100 yards, 14.7 14 yard, yards per carry, and certainly Justin Jackson at 135 yards in this ball game. Backup quarterback Matt alvidi has got 54 yards running as well. Combined, the Northwestern Wildcats have 303. And this is Larkin again inside the five to the four. Larkin and Jackson are built similarly. With about 5'10", 5'11", for Justin Jackson. Larkin at about 195, and Jackson goes about 200 pounds. He's averaging 13.8 yards per carry. Yeah, that, that last run took his, his average down a little bit. This feels like a huge play here for Kentucky to try to keep it a one-possession game. Larkin stopped near the two. Darius West, a safety coming up again. And it's fourth down. You got to be elusive to make it Mike Edwards miss. Doesn't miss much, but Larkin in the hole is able to escape the mitts of Mike Edwards. Chip shot field goal, or do you go for it if you're Northwestern on a fourth and one to try to put the game away? Well, Pat Fitzgerald told us that he is not shy about going for it on fourth down, so he is going to roll the dice here. I'm okay with it. You got a lead. You believe in your offensive line. We mentioned it since the Penn State game. They have been playing some pretty, pretty stout football up front. Need to get to the one for a first down. Fourth and one, Jackson next to Alvidi. And it's a reverse. And Lees is under all kinds of pressure wanting to throw the ball to the end zone. Up for grabs, incomplete. They try a trick play on fourth and one, and Kentucky gets off the field again. Now, if you ask me about the play call, <laughs> that's a little bit different. And uh, I'm... I'm going to line Justin Jackson up and run the football downhill behind Blake Hans, J.B. Butler, Brad North, and Tommy Doles and Rashawn Slater. They try the trick play with Lees. Kentucky says, no, sir. UK gets the ball back. Kentucky trails 17-14 to number 21, Northwestern. It's always easy to play armchair quarterback when a trick play doesn't work, but Andre, he got the best back in school history in his final game. Don't you keep the football with Justin Jackson? One of the better backs in all of college football that not a lot of fans know about. And I line him up, that big offensive line, get some push, let him go to work. So Steven Johnson in Kentucky operating standing in his own end zone. This is just the 16th play on offense they've had this half. And K1 Ross gives them better field position on a nice strike from Johnson. Like the explosiveness. We're pushing the gas a little bit offensively for Kentucky, taking, being the aggressor there, not just going to run the football out of the end zone to get some breathing room. Would you throw it? Senior quarterback made a nice quick decision and a completion. 14 yards. On the catch from the senior from Westchester, Ohio. Johnson facing pressure from Gaziano, and he's picked off. Straddling the sideline is Kyle Cairo. Touchdown, Northwestern. Or Gaziano can just take over a game. Now, didn't get there, but he certainly affected the placement because it rushed Steven Johnson. We had to take a look and see if. Oh, 
Oh, so far, so good. That is a Houdini act by the senior from New Jersey, Kyle Cairo, with his eighth career interception. I think that's going to stand and pick six. Unbelievable, the concentration here. We'll certainly take another look upstairs as they make it official. It stands, it's a 26 yard pick six for Cairo, who is a high school triple jumper and high jumper, so he's certainly been using his legs his whole life. Incredible one handed interception that he had last year against the Hoosiers. That was the number one play on SportsCenter's top ten. This has to make that list too. Well, no doubt about it. I mean, what a what a job of concentration. We give credit to receivers so much, but here, knowing exactly where he is, tiptoeing that pulse out. After review, the ruling on the field stands as called. Touchdown. Yeah, he's hanging that ball out, trying to tiptoe down the sideline. What a play. Let all secondary players for Northwestern in tackles this year and interceptions. It's his fifth of the year, starting in all 12 games. What a season he's had his senior year. Saw Clayton Thorson celebrating in that chair on the sideline after that gruesome leg injury he sustained in the first half. Kubander to make it a 10-point game. Joe Casiano has been in the backfield all day. And as you said, Andre, the pressure that he gave Steven Johnson created this interception. Yeah, just forced the throw a little bit where you can't really step into it and get everything on it. But I think uh, Cal Cairo had such a break on it. I'm not sure that, you know, regardless of a clean pocket or not, going there was not the right place in which to throw the football. Five interceptions this season. Capital One Bowl Mania continues Monday at noon Eastern on ESPN2. Michigan takes on South Carolina in the Outback Bowl and at 1 p.m. Eastern on ABC. Notre Dame takes on LSU in the Citrus Bowl presented by Overton's. Both games are also available on the ESPN app. LSU offensive coordinator Matt Canada answering questions today in the media availability about his future and whether or not this will be his final game as the play caller for the LSU Tigers. Find out when he they play the Fighting Irish. He just got to town. He just got there. <laughs> Clearly, he has not seen eye to eye wow. with Ed Ogeron. Well, if it is his last game as an LSU Tiger, it won't take him long to get employment. Is it NC State, then Pitt, now LSU, and he'll be headed elsewhere. Ash Daniel on the squib kick past the 25-yard line. Pat Fitzgerald has said the one thing he needed through all of this was a commitment, a financial commitment, not to him, but to the entire program. Well, guess what? He's getting it. $265 million Ryan Fieldhouse and Walter Athletic Center will open up in the coming months. It is 500,000 square feet. It is right on the lake. And it is beautiful. You see the renderings. Fitz wow. came in yesterday to our meeting and showed us these pictures. And he is ecstatic about opening this facility. Look at that. How about that. I think that levels the playing field for Northwestern a little bit. And he says what's next has to be Ryan Field. That that will be the next thing that must get some renovations in the coming years. Johnson back to work, incomplete, looking for Ross, who says, bring me the flag, and he gets it. And he gets one. I'll tell you what, there's been such tight coverage. Mont Montre Hardage right here in coverage. You get the interception by Kyle Cairo. Defense number 24. The ball will be placed to the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. That could have basically gone either way, but these defensive backs are playing some tight coverage. Marcus McShepard, you talked about, about him earlier in the ball game, made a nice play. Kentucky near the 40. SJ pumps one-on-one -on -one to Ross again, incomplete. Hardage right there 
with him. For more on Northwestern's huge facility, let's go down to Olivia. Well, Pat Fitzgerald had a big part in the design, but he really wanted to build it around the players. He said he needs synergy between the players and coaches. In fact, the team rooms flow right into the coaches' offices. Guys, they looked at 65 NFL facilities to get a vision together for what they want. All glass, lake-facing. He says it makes us look like the big-time program that we are. Pat Ryan, the billionaire insurance man, has had such a huge imprint on his alma mater as King takes it past the 50-yard line right at the chains and had a little pushing and shoving at the end of the play. King was was blown down. Blown, the play was blown dead, and he was down already. Not sure what the melee is about, but Pat Fitzgerald told us he said he didn't want he doesn't want to want to build a house. Get a chance first to look at the end of this. Still laying on a body, but ball, ball did come out. But Saheem King did come back, come up with the football. Luciano trying to get to Johnson. Instead, down the field, pass underthrown to Garrett Juice Johnson as McShepard in coverage. It's second down. To finish your thought on Pat Ryan, the billionaire insurance man, he, mm -hmm. he said in the, the late 70s that Northwestern almost went to the Ivy League. They were so bad at football, and he was so discouraged that he said through his success, he wanted to make the any financial commitment necessary so that they could be competitive against all teams in the Big Ten. And that's happening now <laughs> in 2017 into 18 with this new field house that he has his name on. Yeah, when you can – and when it opens – how that's going to affect recruits unbelievably that that will transform the, the program in itself second and ten pass and ali incomplete to put to put a bow on that though that Fitzgerald he said he don't want to build a house because i've looked at so many doorknobs and, <laughs> yes. and things of that sort and had to chew pick and choose that those things i don't want any part of that anymore so uh it's about all that the process is finished. They're just waiting to uh, to complete it and move in. And I, I think it's going to do wonders for Northwestern's program. Kentucky has to get to the Northwestern 39. King on the underneath throw gets to the 41. It'll be fourth and two from there. I think this is a, a position on the field in which Mark Stoops is going to have to roll the dice here. It's about six and a half minutes left in the ball game. And where's Juice Johnson when you need him? Big fourth down here if they decide to throw the football, which I think they will without Benny Snell in the backfield. But Juice is actually on the sideline in this situation. Here's K1 Ross where he's gone at other times. On the fourth down throw, it's caught. Nice catch made by Charles Walker to move the chains. Excellent throw, excellent catch, and the timing was perfect. From Johnson to Walker, just enough to get the first down, inside move, and away from Brett Walsh, the, the outside linebacker. Walker, the senior from Louisville, the Kentucky basketball team crushing Louisville today. King somehow skirts through there for a few, past the 35, down to the 34. So five and a half left. Kentucky is in field goal range. As McGinnis has got a cannon for a leg. They need points this drive, whether it's in the form of a field goal or they get themselves into the end zone. Trent Goins looked like he came across early. Free play for Johnson, and he takes it. Oh, and incomplete. At the last minute, Marcus McShepard gets a hand in on Kwan Ross. Boy, it's the bobble at the end of it. Ross bobbles the ball, which allows McShepard to get a hand on the football. Offside. In the neutral zone at the snap, defense number 54. Five-yard penalty. Replay second down. But how about the heads-up play of Steven Johnson to take the shot, realizing that he had an offsides penalty? That should have been a touchdown mm. catch. And you bobble it, it comes off your chest. 
as opposed to hand catching that baby. He lets it get into his body. It bounces, and that's when McShepard makes a nice play on it. Second and two after the Northwestern penalty. Johnson pumps. And too tall for Isaiah Epps. I think Steven Johnson is playing knowing that he has four downs to get the job done to pick up, up first downs right now. Third and two. He knows that uh, he's working with all four downs going forward. Two hundred forty one yards passing for the man from Rancho Cucamonga, California in his last game in a Kentucky uniform. King, no place to go. Stopped in the backfield back at the 30 yard line. Lancaster and company making the tackle and here comes McGinnis to try to make it a seven point game. And his range about 50 to 55 yards. One of the best doing it. Austin McGinnis. He has 71 career field goals. And this a 48-yard attempt to break his season mark that he set last year. Automatic. 21 field goals last year, 22 as a senior. Needed a field goal, at least three points in that drive. Kentucky able to put one on the board and draw with within seven points of Northwestern. You're watching the Franklin American Mortgage Music City Bowl as part of Capital One Bowl Mania. It's the 20th edition of this great game in Nashville and Northwestern. Holds on to a seven-point lead over Kentucky. Fans, you can tune in to ESPN3 for the post-game trophy ceremony presented by Capital One immediately following the game. Northwestern holds on. They have a 10th win on the season for just the fifth time in school history. Well, Kentucky has not won a bowl game since the 2008 season. At 424 to change that. As McGinnis will kick it deep to Jeremy Larkin. And he's coming out. Mistake made at the 16-yard line. He was leveled. How about that open field tackle made by Marcus Walker? The New Year's Six continues New Year's Day with the college football playoff semifinals on ESPN. Number three, Georgia, and number two, Oklahoma. Kick things off in the Rose Bowl game at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 Pacific from Pasadena. Then at 8.45 Eastern, it's number four, Alabama, and number one, Clemson in the All-State Sugar Bowl from the Superdome in New Orleans. Both games also streaming live on the ESPN app. That was Tobias Gilliam. I'm going to give him the credit for that huge hit that he made. You saw what was at stake there for both of these teams. Justin Jackson running in the final minutes of his incredible collegiate career. Man, it just looks like at times he is going to get blown up and then he gives it and takes it away. I mean the shiftiness right here. Pascal you thought, Pascal you thought had him. Then another defender for Kentucky you thought had him bottled up. And he makes both miss on his way to a first down. What a player. And now the nation getting a chance to see a guy that has rushed for over 1,000 yards four consecutive years. It's hard to do. One, you got to stay healthy. Two, get the amount of carries, and he is, he's done exactly that. Well, here comes carry number 30, at least the next time they give him the football. There it is, 13 yards on the last carry. And he's into the secondary again with seven more. You consider last year he had 224 yards rushing as the MVP of the Pinstripe Bowl, which Northwestern won. He's got 155 with 320 to go in this hey, one. 30 carries, no problem. Just hop up, <laughs> give it to me again. What a job he's done tonight, both he and Jeremy Larkin, his counterpart in the backfield. 
as durable as any back you'll ever see in college football. Tenth yeah. ever. It's because in you, it's because you never get a clean shot on him. You're gonna you get you you may tackle him, but you never get a clean shot. Milking all of the clock is Alvidi before giving way to Jackson, and he doesn't have much there. He's just as impressive off the field as Kentucky will use a timeout. A, Justin Jackson was one of 13 their first of the half. finalists for the National Football Foundation Campbell Trophy as the sport's top scholar-athlete. He got an $18,000 postgraduate scholarship. Just a complete player for Northwestern. Again, coming up after us, it is the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic. It's number eight USC versus number five Ohio State. That is 8.30 Eastern time, so just Oh, under an hour and a half away, Darnold versus JT Barrett tonight, Dre. Yeah, you see over 3,700 yards for Sam Darnold, 26 touchdown passes, a guy that is extremely accurate with the football. When he's going, he is really going. And then JT Barrett on the other side, 40, responsible for 45 TDs. The guy that just, he just wins football games. Time after time, you count him out, you think Ohio State's done. He finds a way to will his team to victory. Two forty-two to go, and a big third and four for Northwestern. They're three of seven in this half. They give it to Jackson again, and the extra effort is just short of the first down. It's fourth down. And I got to believe here, Pat Fitzgerald will send the punter out and punt this baby away. This side of the fifty-yard line, he's he's thinking about it. Players are trying to talk him into going for it here. Like Tommy Doles actually got in the way. The third team all Big Ten right guard. It's a full yard that they need. For more on the Cotton Bowl, we have a little sideline to sideline reporter teleconference that happened today, Olivia. Yeah, it's cool how that happens, right? Allison Williams is the reporter on that game. She told me that JT Barrett is downplaying the significance of his last game in his home state, no less. It's a great quarterback failure to watch tonight, but USC head coach Clay Helton says it's the whole Buckeye team that's so impressive. Top to bottom, they're the most complete team that they'll face. It's going to be a good one, but when he puts on their tape, he said, whoa, these are some real dudes. Should be a stellar offensive line. Great run play they have to account for. It should be a good one. Looks like Northwestern is going to at least initially show that they're going for it on their own 39-yard line on a fourth and one. Alvidi on the sneak. It'll depend on the spot. I don't think so, Taylor. What a gamble by Pat Fitzgerald. Well beyond his 50 yard, the 50 yard line, and I think well, Courtney Love came out of the pile with the football. Yeah, they can't even find the ball because Courtney Love has it running towards the Kentucky bench. But that mark, it's always the forward foot of the official looks to be short. I think it's going to be Kentucky's ball. Three to two, a, a timeout. And 2.31 on the clock. Man, what an aggressive call by Fitzgerald there. On fourth and at least a yard, and Alvini lowers his head, had to get past the 40-yard line, but you see those side judges coming in shy of the mark. Actually looks like the correct spot. Hard to tell. Just short. A couple of links short. Northwestern now one of five on fourth down today. Kentucky gets the football with 231 left. And some excellent field position to go down to try to tie this game up. Now Fitz is on the field saying that he'd like to challenge the spot. But you wonder you wonder if there is enough evidence to turn this call in Northwestern's favor. 
didn't really get much push. It's tough. It's tough to see it. And I think it it warrants taking a look at by the replay officials, but I'm not sure that enough is going to be. It's not going to show enough to, to overturn the ruling on the field, in my opinion. Kentucky's going to have it right about the 39 and a half yard line. It's so close. He had one, Alvidi, he had one surge that looked like he might have gotten to the 40 yard line, but again, do they see enough evidence to mark the football there? Northwestern's players are watching on the big board and they think they do. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think there's enough video evidence to overturn that the ruling on the field. This would be the, the look you would have to have. And it, it looked for a second briefly that Alvidi was approaching the 40-yard line. But again, is that enough evidence for the replay team upstairs? Alvidi with 54 yards rushing off the bench for Clayton Thorson. We had a serious right leg injury early in the game today. Sporting the headband and the mustache here in his final college football game. After review, the ruling on the field stands. First down, Kentucky. Yeah, I think that's the right call. Well, usually when you get a bunch of bodies in there and the officials on the field make a call, whether it's a first down or just shy, it usually stands because you just don't get a clean shot of where the football was when the ball when the whistle's blown such an aggressive choice by Northwestern to go for it again now one of five on fourth down today and Kentucky has the football inside Northwestern's 40 with 231 to go and one timeout Johnson middle of the field and it's rig who somehow got between defenders for a first down Rig his second catch tonight he had one on the season coming in. He's a young tight end, just a sophomore, who's just continued to get better. And how about the confidence that Steven Johnson has in Justin Rigg to go to him a couple of occasions tonight? 16 yards inside the 25, near the 23. Johnson runs past the 20 and stays on his feet near the 17-yard line where he's tackled by Nathan Fox. Yeah, that was one of the things that Pat Fitzgerald was concerned about was when Steven Johnson pulled the ball down to run with it and make plays with his legs, and he's certainly capable. 300 yards, 358 to be exact on the season with three touchdown runs and another one tonight. Second and four, Kentucky can get a first down. Past the 13. Johnson pumps under pressure. Down he goes back at the 20-yard line. Warren Long got him. Now you got to go ahead and speed things up, get back, get set. You got receivers walking back to the line of scrimmage. It's going to be about under a minute when you snap this thing on third down. What a time for Long's first career sack in his first career start. Clock running. Kentucky 1 of 10 on third down today. 0 for 4 in the second half. Two plays to get past the 13. Johnson, middle of the field, incomplete. Here comes the flag if yeah. the rep back judge can find it. He's so He's got so many layers on with the weather and the cold down there, he couldn't find the flag. Well, this is going to be a pass interference and an automatic first down for Kentucky. Question is, my friend, if, Mark, if they score here and score a touchdown, will Mark Holding Stoops go for two? Holding an receiver defense. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Will he go for two? If he gets to that position, first another look at this holding call on Northwestern. A clear. It's Godwin Igwebuke. 
So now first and goal with 43 seconds left. Kentucky just inside the 10. We'll cover zero, an all-out blitz coming right now. Johnson on a design. Quarterback keeper has daylight. And he lowers the shoulder. Touchdown. Steven Johnson throws a pick six to Kyle Cairo and comes back with 10 unanswered points. Kentucky down one. And as you said, with 37 seconds left, at least initially, their offense is staying on the field going for two. Yeah, he's going to – he is down numbers. His best back out of this ball game. And Benny Snell going to try to end this baby right now. Steven Johnson has come out of the game twice today because of Joe Gaziano's pressure. I'm going to make sure everything's clean here. If it's not, take the time out and go to the sideline and talk about it. Pat Fitzgerald, it's not clean on his side. Took a look at the formation and then used the timeout to maybe get him get his defense in the right uh, right situation. Tonight on Sports Center with Scott Van Pelt after USC Ohio State we'll take a closer look at Sam Darnold's NFL future after what could be his final game. Nashville's Kirk Herb Street with his assessment of Ohio State season and the funniest and most unique moments of 2017 from SB, SVP's perspective in the best available video of the year. All that and more on Sports Center at midnight Eastern on ESPN and on the ESPN app. In the town that Herbie lives in, we've got drama here. And there you see Sam Darnold warming up as the Cotton Bowl is coming up next. So Mark Stoops and Kentucky going for the win with 37 seconds left. I like it. Try to extend this thing. Just go ahead and get it over with you down here. You may not... Good a shot to get in this position again, so take care of it. K1 Ross right here. Been a big target. And another timeout called by Northwestern. Northwestern went cover zero, so when he broke containment, the blitzers were inside. And Receivers are running routes, so you can't, you don't really pick the quarterback up until you hear the crowd as a defensive back and you turn out of coverage to come back. And that's why he was right at the goal line when Mark Montre Hardage actually even had a shot at, at tackling Steven Johnson. Does the ball leave Steven Johnson's hands here on this two point conversion? I think it's a run pass option where you give him an R RPO and he can either keep it or you give him somewhere to go with the football. But I definitely think, you know, it's, it's, this won't be a handoff to Saheem King. No Benny Snell ejected in the first half. Kentucky's had to change their identity. They trailed by 10 points in the fourth quarter, going for the win with 37 seconds left. Uh, this is six foot six out here. Johnson there in motion. Johnson will throw. In zone. Taven Richardson can't make the catch. Marcus McShepard there in coverage. Northwestern takes over. Once again, having to throw under duress. Forces or speeds up things when you can get pass rush. And they did it there with just four rushers. Set all of a sudden it's not clean. It doesn't the times that not he doesn't have ideal time. That one just sails on him just a little bit. You see Fitz's reaction here, and he knows he needs his team to recover an onside kick that Mark Stoops' team will now have to attempt after he made the bold decision of going for the win. has gotten tremendous pressure all night long from the pocket. Thought maybe they would move him and try to secure an edge and give him a clean throwing lane. 
or the option to keep the football and run it in. So now Kentucky will have to attempt an onside kick with 37 seconds left, down one to the Northwestern Wildcats. What a wild game today featuring injuries, one significant to Clayton Thorson, the Northwestern quarterback, a controversial ejection of Benny Snell, and then to Patty Fisher, the linebacker for Northwestern. The game has had so many twists and turns, and here is Austin McGinnis with the onside kick attempt to try to give Kentucky the football back. Instead, he angles it past the Wildcats, and it's covered up easily down at the 25-yard line by Montre Hardage. And Northwestern is going to win back-to-back -back bowl games for the first time in school history. And tonight's Capital One player of the game is Justin Jackson in his final performance for the Northwestern Wildcats. 32 carries, 157 yards rushing, and the 10th leading rusher in college football history. And they needed him the most. He's able to step up tonight, see just under five yards per carry in the two touchdowns. Justin, John, Justin Jackson came through for Pat Fitzgerald and this Northwestern program. So much credit to Kentucky for their fight today going to the wire with Northwestern. But credit to Pat Fitzgerald and the Wildcats from Evanston. Another 10-win season, and they'll finish the season in the top 25. What a job. What a ball game. And I agree totally with Mark Stoops and going for it there for trying to put the game away with a two-point conversion. No doubt about it. Oh, Olivia's got Fitz. First of all, I know that's cold, right? Oh, my goodness. Uh, what a game. What a, what a hard-fought battle. Uh, Mark, his young men, what a battle. I'm so proud of our guys. The adversity we faced today was pretty indicative of the whole year. And uh, got a little bowl game aggressive, but, you know, it worked out because the guys made the plays, and I'm incredibly proud of them. On that point, you lost your quarterback. You lost one of your best defensive players. How did you guys get it done? Just character. It's Wildcat men being Wildcat men. That's who we recruit. They're from great families. It's an honor and a privilege to be their coach and to send our seniors out. 27 wins over three years hasn't happened around here a lot. Now this group joins a very special fraternity of Wildcat men in the 10-win club. And to do it with the 314 GPA, this is the most special group of men in the country, and I'm honored and privileged to be their coach. Coach, thank you. Congratulations. Thanks. Happy New Year. Go Cats. Once again, our final score, Northwestern 24, Kentucky 23. Coming up next, it's the H&R Block College football pregame. So long from Nashville. Let's send it back to the studio.